mostly for it here. Uh, uh, we still have, have 15 oh, minutes like till the next have panel have comes up. So they're doing something. Apparently, got a giveaway of some kind going on too. So. A giveaway. That's, Sorry, I'm turning you guys down a little. It was good. It's just as good. Uh, we are here in the general lounge. Oh, hey, we just came on in the With general echoes. lounge. Now batting center fielder, <laughs> Love Jerry. Manny Moda. <laughs> right. So we're it's here in the to general lounge him. with a collection of star citizens among us. Among us? What? Uh, waiting for the start of our taking sh our talking ship panel. <laughs> I almost said the wrong thing. <laughs> talking, ship panel. talking ship panel. That was my pun. Boy, I didn't realize how dangerous it was until I was live. Uh, Somebody guys, had a we've seen two presentations so far. The it's a long way to Among Us crossover. All at once, what was your favorite thing you've seen so far? <laughs> Space cows. I see the imposter among them. Space, Space cows. cows. Dead. Space cows. Server meshing. Oh, yeah, server meshing was great. Space cows, dude. That story Chris told is the <laughs> absolute truth. Three weeks ago, we're just having a meeting, just this general, like, hey, what are you doing? Just checking in on everything we're going to show it sitting on. And Paul, Paul shows there, us, I have this video to pretty, show. Uh, I, I, think I, know how to, I think I know how to show server meshing. And we watched it, and we're just like, and Chris challenged him right there. I uh, said, "Hey, if you were if you were if you were brave at all, you'd do it live on stage." And then challenged him again to add two people, then challenged him again to add six people. And yeah, that's what we do. If you can do it live, you can do it live. Uh, yeah, what's the thing you're lo most looking forward to? Uh, just FYI, guys, I'm streaming yet again. Just I'm sorry, what? Remember this too. Also, uh, you may yeah. not you yeah, may miss it during Chris's announcement. The Pyro Playground, which we're about to go uh, to Dan Howbreck, he's going to show us, is I actually see this going to be available playground. in the new Star Citizen Preview Channel. You can learn all about the Preview Channel and how that's going to work up on the RobertSpaceIndustries.com website. There's going to there's going to be a selection. There's going to be a lottery of people who got the digital goodies pack from CitizenCon. Uh, those people in our concierge, and of course, uh, uh, the, our our selection of our most uh, devoted testers, and then. We'll be able to play in the preview channel uh, throughout the okay. remainder of this year before it goes to PTU and then eventually it's live release. So okay, that, so there's a hint there that goes to PTU Dan, in January. Take it away, man. Nice. Yep. Thanks, Jared. It's good to see you. These people are not uh, glad getting to see you're back out from backstage. Welcome back, now. everyone, to SizzleCon 2953. We are back the on the show year. floor. Yes, we said through the end of the year until it hits PTU. Easily the wow. key feature of the show floor. We want to give a quick shout out to our you two sponsors who helped make Pyro Playground and Checkmate Station possible. I'm sorry, say again. If they're smart, they will. If they're smart, they will. Behind me, you see all these amazing gamers who are experiencing Pyro. For the very Start low and slow, and then build, 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 build. Get send out email invites to people. We're so excited to bring Pyro into the hands of yeah. everyone who's here. Hopefully, you guys get a chance to check out the Pyro Playground later today. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about what made Pyro so ex uh, spectacular to bring it here. And to help me do that, we got Michael Smith. You guys may know him as Bayor, head of the player experience. Ah, oh, we get a face a for Bayor. What it was like to bring Pyro here. How's it going, Bayor? Pretty good. He has less hair than I thought he would. Really quick question. What were your expectations bringing Pyro into players' hands for the first time? I mean, it must have been a very kind of nerve-wracking thing. There's a lot of uh, anticipation for something like that. So what was your expectations bringing it here today? Well, honestly, I didn't really have a lot of expectations because Pyro is an entire system. So it was just, let's get it out there. Let's see what happens and see how much we can get done, how much content we can get out. But yeah, I have no expectations. Yeah, it's it's so big that you just can't think about how big it is. It's it's so monumental, and That's what she from said. what I've been seeing, people are having a blast. Everyone I've seen it's come the out girth, of the buddy. It's all about the girth. Has a big smile on their face. Their faces look blown. They just look so happy to experience pyro. And so, uh, what's the coolest yeah, reaction so you've seen so far? First today? person dead in pyro. Honestly, it, a lot of it's been the environment, but the big surprise has actually been. I'll exit the, the jump gate and die immediately. <laughs> Meet you. Going to fight right. the FSCR. Kind of surprised they're so hard. Uh, some of that stuff. How many new tech. Come so it's gate, neat to see players dealing with that and realizing, oh my god, I have to re really struggle with this and really fight to deal with. I'm sorry, say that again, please. So what do you say? You'll a little bit take more damage if your ship is in prep right, right in Pyro. Miles, miles better, yeah. Yeah, radioactive. Fantastic. Yeah, so it'll so slowly eat away your ship. So journey mm -hmm. of when you got your hands on Pyro, we had multiple internal playtests leading up to SizzenCon. I've been in several of them, and I know what it was like for me. I really hope, like Ron, Ron has stated many times, he hopes that there's caustic clouds or something that you mine in in Pyro, and you get this super valuable material from it. And it was just so you're like really tempted to. Environments were mine in there uh, for the material, even though it's eating your then, ship. So up. it's been fun to see every single iteration, but yeah, the first experience is cool. just super mind blowing. It just looks mm -hmm. so, so different. 
yeah, it's just being on Checkmate Station. You couldn't get lost for there forever. I'm and sorry, I'm turning this down. Players only folks. have 40 minutes uh, to do the Pyro Playground, and I've seen people go back in line. I've seen people just like go and the redo things that they didn't get a chance by. to do the first time. Nope, so, uh, what advice do you have no. for people who are here at CizenCon? Spoiler free. Again, we want to give people at home something to look forward to. What is your spoiler free uh, suggestion for people who are here going through it? Honestly, I would suggest to get out of the station. The station is really, really cool, but get to a ship, get to one of the planets and get to an outpost, and especially see if you can do one of the FPS AI missions because they're really, really cool, and that's a really, really fun journey. And uh, we have uh, Chief Technology Officer Benoit here. Benoit, what do you feel? Uh, completely unplanned. Didn't ask him to come by, and he just stopped in. Benoit, uh, what do you feel about Pyro? Oh, Pyro is fantastic. I love the new experience. I love the new environments. I, I love the FPS we're getting on these machines here. If you were at the playground, oh my God, like this is great. So I'm super excited about the- That's yeah. encouraging. Uh, so, sorry for mm -hmm. getting off there. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of the screens and it's so smooth. Like it's so oh great to see people- It's like, a local server. It's Pyro gotta be a local server running on like a local a switch. Experience Bro, to have for the first time. Whatever. So not thank you guys for bringing so Pyro to the player's hands for the first time. Uh, and we're going to talk really quick. Uh, thank you, Benoit, for oh your uh, photo were bomb. You thank you, uh, Bayor. We're going to talk to a player who just <laughs> got to experience uh, it, Pyro for the very first time. We size. got uh, user Nick at Night uh, here. So tell me, uh, Nick at Night, again, what was your spoiler-free impressions of Pyro? Sort of impressions or feelings when you got to be in Pyro for the first time? Yeah, I mean, I think calling it a playground is just missing how immersive that it is currently in this build. Uh, I, as, as Bayor mentioned, got out of the station, was able to see everything in the, in, the, in the universe, and man, was it just amazing to kind of go between the asteroid belts into the new planets and see all those new things that you guys have been working on. So I was really excited. I love that. Yeah, there's minutes, some guys. really cool things. I cannot stress enough. I'm glad. I'm turning him down real quick. I just want to state that I'm glad they're doing this because remember what I stated multiple times this past quarter. They need to put it in the hands of players, not some dev playing a demo. Fucking players. I'm glad they did this. Because we are the largest menaces they will ever see. Well, that and also for me, it's more encouraging the fact that they have, even if they have this little limited playground demo thing. As long as it's at a point i mean it, it tells me it's at a point where other people can play it not just a dev who knows don't go here don't go here don't do this don't do that stick to the script it's it's amazing we break shit good we did it guys exactly should i do it no will i do it fuck yes uh, that's not true we're still my, got my another day was, of panels i think it was um so uh, i can't remember which dev it was it was one of the high ups i think i don't know if it was sean or one of the other guys um, but um, they turned around so and, and someone asked, would you be able to pyro. track the exactly. asteroids? You heard it here. This guy had such a great experience with the pyro playground. And Sean had this sort of puzzled look on his face and said, well, I suppose they're really physicalized objects. I I'm suppose you back could. To Jared really quick but and why would you do that? And Jared just looked at Sean and just said, have you met our community? Right. Am I on? Dead set within an hour of that stream happening. Someone had designed soccer with an asteroid and the and the the, the, the little tractor beam ship, and how you could actually play soccer with the rings of Fort Alazar using the tractor beams on the ship and an asteroid. I can't hear anything. Dude. Wave to me. Okay, Play okay, air hockey. Hi, everybody. Like an it's air hockey table set up with two caterpillars the, turned in the inside, the inside uh, the caterpillar. We are here in front of you Soul Armada, uh, Altama right. Energy. Uh, you want to know why? Atlas because uh, this is Atlas why. Atlas Defense Industries. I love that guy's shirt. I paused my game to be here. I just decided I was going to pick on you today. It's all right. Cool. It's appropriate. I want to show something off. So one of the things that happens anytime that we show up at one of these events, whether it's Gamescom or CitizenCon or even a bar citizen, is people give you things that you have to fit into your luggage when you go home, which is not always hey, the Rush. easiest thing on an international flight. Today, just nine minutes ago, I got something I'm gonna make some room for. So there is an org, uh, they do this amazing, we had an older version, you may have seen me show it off before. Delta Consulting Aviation Products, they make air traffic controller manuals for every landing zone and POI in the Stanton system. Wow, no, fucking I one I've had for the last five years. <laughs> Dude. One of my absolute most treasured items. That's and the guy just showed up and handed me another one. That is sweet as fuck. So I don't know what I'm leaving behind from my luggage, 
but we're going to have some... Like, Just leave the ice cream. You don't need the ice cream. You can get ice cream over there. So we're leaving yeah, something behind. So with yeah, this, dude. let's take a look. I fuck Ben and Jerry. Just take that. Oh, one of the community, the uh, one of the community orgs that right? have a booth here. I just want. I don't have time to interview. We gotta get that shot. Zone. I just want to see your jacket. <laughs> your jacket. Wherever it wants to land becomes the landing zone. Ferrets. There's your answer. Star Citizen. That's that's the killer. You got a giant Invictus <laughs> wow, patch. Yeah, so, um, what Holy legal shit. clearance did you that's get nice. in order to make that? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I stole the whole lot. Toast. <laughs> He's floating around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's come on over here to uh, uh, what, what is this? Altama Energy. You might have seen uh, you might have seen Segelian from Altama Energy in the cosplay contest before we went to lunch. Altama, how you doing, guys? Is this the guy uh, that got robbed? I noticed robbed? this full size. No. Okay. Uh, uh, the what? In Lego. The guy that got robbed. Uh, I will trade you a the... flight deck, man. No, oh yeah, with the costume. Yeah. There's no way I'd get that back. No, I don't yeah, know. Sorry. No, the Artemis Army was the guy that got robbed. Of course, yeah, over that's here, what I thought it was. Yeah, yeah that was bullshit. Oh, no, oh, hi, not you. Hi, you yeah, yeah, I work with Jesse in the office. Uh, we have Atlas Defense Industries over dude, here. That full uh, armor. What dude. do you guys got going on? It was so nice. Yeah, yeah. You got a rabble? That dude. That dude got robbed. I wonder how many. Uh, I wonder how many boats you would get on like a Reddit poll. And then some 3D printed artwork here that I've done up. So if you want to come over and get in the raffle, we're also giving out a ship at five. That's cute. We're giving out every hour, so come on over. It's what? What happens if I win? Cute little Pisces. They're raffling off. I'm surprised they're letting them raffle that off. You might think Jared's being the edgy clamps 3D prints, dude. This guy's face, but he just offered to be a back rub, and it was just better if that didn't go out on the live stream. Uh, oh, oh, okay. We got one more thing to check out. We got one more thing to check out. What is this? This is for me to take home? <laughs> is this touch me? Dude, that's an MFD. Touch me? Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. wow. That's epic. MFD. It's good to be Jared, huh? Yeah. Oh. Oh. No. No. Yeah. He's interacting with the MFD, guys. Wait. There's a, there's a system like map bitch. right there. <laughs> They're doing a better wow. system map than they did. God damn. Hire him. At this point, find out what the guy's fucking name is and hire him. This is just dang cool. Jesus Christ. Oh, all right. He did a so better map in probably like three months. Turn back to Hall A. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, talking ship uh, with Imagine John Crew, Ben Curtis. I'm sorry. You could probably link it in. You know, make it like a touch, inter make it like an input source, and maybe even map it as a joystick if we had the right R Arduino. Stay tuned. That's coming up next. Okay, I'm going to sit down and bus. have a refreshing beverage. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Like putting it on your desk and be like, bloop, bloop, bloop. I think they're doing stuff still now. Did you get ready to go to talking ship? This is the A1 commercial. Yeah, we've seen it. Been there, seen it. Been there, done that. Yeah, have it already. Been there, got the pen. Yeah, it's the same commercial. We've done it. We've seen it. I think I might have put too much drum in the think so? Yeah, I'm sorry, what? There's never too much rum. Where's the rum gone? Someone is in need. At the moment, I, actually, I think it's at this point, I've put too much, uh, too little coke in my rum. <laughs> Thought you were Australian. The spirit of Crusader. Yeah, drinking, like, in your blood. It might, you might as well be Irish. Yeah. Right? I don't drink a lot. I don't get the time to drink a lot. I normally work, like, six, seven days a week, so I don't drink. And secure. Forge the future. Moon, can you do me a favor and say something? The A1 spirit from Crusader Industries. Or just ignore me, that works too. Moon. <laughs> Who are we trying to get to talk? Moon, so I could gauge his audio level on Talking screen. ships, here we go. Me? Yeah, Thank you. Me. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, me, say, huh? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, moon. The yeah. moon. Yeah, dude, shut up already. You keep talking. Jeez. <sighs> <laughs> Thanks, Hi, I want to get your audio level good. <laughs> Have we all, oh, we had a good morning John. looking at cool stuff. Great. Uh, my name's John Crew. I'm the vehicle director here at Clubhouse hey, Games. Hey, Crew. And uh, hey. my name's Ben Curtis. I am the vehicle art director at CIG. So we're going to spend the next 40, 45 minutes talking ship. You better be. Uh, we're going to show you some cool stuff that you've hopefully seen. Some cool stuff that you're not supposed to have seen, but you probably already have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some cool stuff. Again, Love you're not that. supposed to have seen, 
but what you've seen is wrong. Ooh. So hopefully we can uh, <laughs> clear that oh, up. Oh, corrections are always good. Right. So that was Take the that, A1 Spirit trailer. Pretty Suck cool it. video. Suck it. Um, but we're now going to do a bit of a slightly deeper dive into the actual art and visuals of okay. the ship. But which ship? A1. I think the A1. Yeah. Oh. Gamers, can you DM yeah. me your uh, your Twitch link so I can post you out on my channel? Uh, yeah, I'm actually on, um, I'm on YouTube. I'm sorry? I'm on YouTube. But I'll give oh, okay. Well, yeah, perfect. Now, oh, that works too. Send me the URL and I'll post it on my channel. I like the A1 has like a little uh, door and grid that goes to the ground. Go straight into and like, yeah, where you find it's the rest so nice. Of the that it needs. Yeah. Up front, we've got a completely fully featured habitation area, suit lockers, weapon lockers, hot beds, uh, everything you're going to need. Right and then, oh, okay. thanks, right gamers. Cockpit, we have a two pilot cockpit, and I think the crew there you go. Engineer, gamers so Cafe, go uh, of, go sub on his on his YouTube needs, channel if you haven't already. Right so you're yeah, in the heat of battle, you kind of might just have that advantage. Sure, Stereo wise, it's classic That's a nice Crusader. Scanner. We've got our recessed mm -hmm. weapons. Mm -hmm. It does, it looks great in the sun. Rear mounted uh, remote turret. And then underneath is all business. We've got the missile racks and we've got the big bomb bays. That's a scam, you can't drop them that fast. <laughs> Versus tried. <laughs> they've done it again. They've done a you know, amazing job of packaging something that's I'm like sorry. super feature rich and something. The bastards are lying to me. Looks fast. False advertising. Still super aggressive. No, I just want to see my refund. C1 is fine. And then here is one oh, last look. Nice. Oh, why not? Okay, that was oh, one man. last look of the interior. It's smaller than I thought it would be. Yeah, I'm sure we could yeah, I really thought it'd be bigger, like like MSR big, but it's not. I like how it's slender though. That this is this yeah, that's true. I expected that from the MSR. And a QR that's true. There that that's hopefully true. takes you to the right place. So reportedly, this is what the MSR originally so was. In Alpha oh yeah. Oh. Thursday, I honestly oh. lost track. Yeah, it was very close to the days. So yeah, that's the current. Let's talk about something a bit further in the past. Oh, he's going to troll us for this shit. So, we have a timeline here from the uh, today all the way through to today in in game. And throughout that time period, what? we have Ooh. our manufacturers in law, starting this with is, RSI in the very near I'll future, now, uh, going all the way through. Oh, uh, lore! This is lore. Okay. Which is. Sorry, I was like, Durr? in game. I have this so, page and on. over this that, is an opportunity when he gets to that last line. We have some very ship old ships, right people now. ships that people think are quite old. Uh, we have the Hornet, we have the Aurora. Mm. Oh, the Zeus! The this is where the Zeus yeah. comes in. However, yeah. as you can see, there is quite a gap from the current day to these old. I'm already ships. refreshing my ship page. Uh, so <laughs> let's talk about Zeus. one that is a bit are you? older than that. There's nothing there. Bezoosh! Yeah. So, yeah. It was a little slow last yeah, year. It took like a minute and a half behind Look, last Zeus. year. Zeus! So, in 2130... How much is it? In 2130, uh, RSI made some look. major kind refresh, of advances in quantum technology. They developed, or they released, the first uh, ship... Zeus is already up. Kind of available um, for the mass market that had quantum capability. 170 credit. This... Kind no, of mid range so, uh, 170 war bond. Uh, really put RSI at the kind of forefront. Of I'm not even seeing it on my page. Now, How the hell do you rate? Good thing, you know, it really kind of boosted them as a company, but that doesn't, it wasn't kind of all good. There it is. The original RSI Zeus I'm getting had one some right major now. issues okay. with its whole integrity. War bonds 170. Said, there's always kind of been this uh, demand for RSI Wait. to release the Zeus. Why but is the. It's kind of had this cult following that's grown up over the years. I don't understand. I'm kind of very happy to announce today that RSI uh, has shit. kind of taken that challenge on board. The um, they've developed a whole new <laughs> vehicle that <laughs> is designed to ferry a whole new generation of travelers. There's on. different models. There's a CL and a Visually, ES. Visually, it's something that pays homage huh. back to the original Zeus and something that's Really, is. uh, there is. yeah, I've got it right there here. To have that, that yes, name. there is, and two. I'm even happier to say yep. it exceeds all current it's safety exactly standards what we thought it was. and all our current ship production. There's an MR for 170, so, 
do you want to have a look? War bond, of course. RSI Zeus Mark I don't even see a 190 for okay. store credit. Here it is. Oh shit, that's beautiful. Ooh. So, I'm buying it. Is that, is that uh, we right are going to hand over to yes. Elwin yes. and Mark to go through this. And what is it, you can see there's three of them there. We don't know yet. There's three variants. MR, CL, and ES. Now. So, over to Mark and Elwin. Oh. So Open your checkbooks, go, gentlemen. $100, Nope, 190 for the MR. Uh, Credit, one seventy five, one seventy. To sign it, cut uh, games. cash. Oof. The CL IAE version <laughs> is one fifty. The ES IEE um, version think? is one fifty. The store page, I think, just took a oh, shit. Smashed. Oh, I don't doubt it. Uh, Let's yeah, take some time now and take a look at this classic art. Well, what are they though? I mean, I'm scared to click more info for it to break down. So, when we decided we wanted to open a new this, tab. We had to consider uh, yeah. what direction Damn, our so site smart. would take it. This is why we're friends. You're carrying me through the dark times. remake the original <laughs> because <laughs> although it was obviously a massive piece of history, <laughs> it was really used for transporting the new No, the site. I noticed so got a, we had uh, to no man starter exactly what we wanted to do with the ship. They had one before. In the end, we decided to go for three variants. Yeah. Allowing you to pick which way you want to actually play Pretty the game. Variants. Amazon well, Cloud the, Services is like... Those variants that we decided on in the end. The Amazon's like, what's going on? Oh, here we go. Three different versions. First of all, essential. Yeah, it's the basic ES. package. The ES is the essential. It's the long-range exploration we version of the Zeus. Oh. It's designed it's to let you go out for a long time and explore the universe. Nice. Oh. Hey, Techno, what's up, buddy? We have the Mark. The mark is the bounty Ooh. hunter version. Ooh. This is there for you, so you can actually in quantum dampener. Go out, find your targets. Wait, what? It's also been it's yeah, yeah. What fresh fuckery is this? Wow. Do you see how big that is? That's not small. And bring them home. No. Finally, it the last version we're going to talk is. about is the CL. So the Clippers like the Aurora the then. The cargo they with, if they know much about maritime. This is the and a tractor beam. Large tractor beam. Tractor beam ships. Tractor beam ships. Do you see this? Of the three variants, it the kind of looks like a, the one that harkens back to the original in a way. design. I'm kind of leaning towards the marquee. I'm not going to lie to you. Job and the vertical stabilizers. <laughs> we also <laughs> work to maintain the silhouette of the original. All three. Holy shit. Jesus, dude. Version. Oh, this is a store page came back. Layered panels. And on the underside, the landing gear and the underslung turret, as well as the engine. Naturally, the MR is the most expensive one. Fold in perfectly flush, leaving behind a super smooth underbelly, just like the original design. But you probably all want to see what the inside looks like. Yeah. So let's have a closer look. Duh. Yeah. Oh, nice. The sleek and okay. slim. It's bigger than I thought it'd be. You pack a lot into it yeah. to give everything you need when you do a deep space. Still won't uh, look at. The, they add more to it. Yeah. Comfortable habitation recreation is that area, so that when like you're out a, here from home, a, 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 it's not too a, like airlock on the. the addition, it looks like a docking collar airlock. Thirty-two nice. SU cargo capacity. As Ship well a boarding one. Able to fit a cyclone. I don't know. We'll see. Decide to land our planet. It's got a docking collar and escape pods in the same. Talking about the loadouts. It's That's ship smart. designed for three wow. it's not even loading It comes with mind. four size two shield generators, two size two power plants, two size two coolers, and two size four pilot controlled okay. weapons. That's concept, so it ain't flight ready yet. Mentioned earlier, two size, two size three remote turret. Dang. Yeah, she's big, dude. Now the Zeus she's mark big. was she's always a chunky girl. beginning to be a sleek but she's and pretty. aggressive bounty hunter. She is. As such, the black paint will help you stay hidden in the shadows until you're ready to strike. Just without He's also redesigned the spine in order to embed an you know, EMP and a one. quantum dampener, which allows us on the art side to really crank up the level of detail yeah, in the um, exterior. Okay, We've also grass, added but... a second remote <laughs> turret on the top. God, the loner ship matrix page is taking forever to load. You see that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Habitation's taking a lot I'm trying to see what the loner ship is for it. But what we've been able to yeah, add really. in exchange for that is a massive... It's arm. not Let's saying yet. They must not have updated it yet. ...might need while you're tracking your target along with this. Looking into the rear, right? we actually have a dedicated... No, the CL is a cargo. MR is the dampener thing. Uh, pods, similar to what you'll see in the Cutlass Blue. So you can yeah, they don't have the Zeus listed in the ship, back. the loaner ship matrix back it has yet. Less SU. So fuck all knows. It only has 16 SU. CL? 
and Clipper? it does GL? have a different loadout with the components. Yeah, Clipper. Only having three size two sheets. Yeah, Techno, I totally feel that. Like Ellen said, I'm on the no no fresh cash till. So you can put the pressure on the target as you're chasing. Okay. The I'm on the no QD no cash till pyro and bandwagon to stop myself. The target escaping once you've caught up with them. I gotta wait until I move into a new place. Right. Now, because the Zeus Clipper back, focuses on hauling cargo, boot, we've decided to lean into the industrial aesthetic. We've covered the exterior with a warning strip paint job, uh, and we've covered the exterior with That's more nice. technical detail and armor plating. Yeah. It's good contrast with the colors. The remote tractor beam, which is mounted on like the rear that. to the side of yeah. the ramp, like the to make it easier to beam. haul cargo in and out of the cargo hold. Nice. We've also added thrust capacity to I, the base like of the lanes. Uh, black, gray, and gold. Cool. As you can see, there is an absolutely Nobody massive rear to it compared to the others. The habitation areas have been massively pushed so that you don't get much space, but we can get way more cargo in. It actually has four yeah. times the cargo capacity Luke, of the S coming it in. It sounds like he's selling a car to someone, doesn't he? This nice. one also features three size two shield generators. And like Al mentioned, it has a size three tractor beam to make Play it much art. easier to get those cargo containers in and out as you're actually playing. What do you think? Definitely so a competitor for the Freelancer Max. Oh, yeah. A better looking. So yeah, much. Last year, we introduced mm, the Spirit. I like that both and the turrets are center live. Anyone that may be playing on their live, live the last couple of days might Dude, have seen the new ship to? adding to the verse. Uh, yeah. court. We hope to follow a similar route with oh, the Zeus Christ. where we announce it today and then in about a year's time ready to reveal to the public to actually play with oh, but so it's about this life. isn't just the concept we're not just going to show you some images the zeus is actually an act of white dot white box development right, right now do you just want to have a look yeah. what would you have done if we have said no <laughs> okay. just like cried and walked away <laughs> I was out of that room. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as you another Dorito with the spirit, and with the many ships we've released thus far, like our fingers. ships can, when they're finished, mm -hmm. look absolutely gorgeous. It's a pyro hanger, ain't it? Before any yeah. of them get to that yeah, point, like. they have to grow through a very specific development process, and this is the so first stage we could in that see process. This by we call this white box. Pyro he said a year. At this point, we've he said a year. Concept, a year ripped up. it to shreds, yeah, and then year. reassembled it, Dark. about a year. Plugged it all back together said. within the editor, so that we can so get a Nexus real good look at what players are going to see when they finally get this game. So a Nexus Citizen Con. At this stage. With the Zeus, we've already ripped out we'll all the thrusters, we've ripped out the landing gear, the turret, the seats, the beds, all of the interior spaces, plug those guys back in, and we have what you see here. Mm. Oh, this is gonna make make it hard for me. <laughs> so again, again would you stop process, thinking like <laughs> at this point we're able to jump in, start throwing in cargo, interacting with doors. That's a lot of cargo. Getting yeah, in and for out sure of that's beds, as it is. maybe in and out of toilets, and just oh, getting an overall sure sense of what it later. feels like to interact with the vehicle. And it is very common that in this oh, so stage, we will make some adjustments there, from the original plan. <laughs> as an example, on this ship, we've just made the decision to expand the center corridor, the add a little bit more space to the rooms. And as a result, that's going to make it much smoother experience for players to traverse the, in the, the interior of the ship as well as for AI to traverse the interior of the ship. We've also expanded the main airlock that leads to the enter exit ladder. Oh. And up here in the cockpit, we've separated the co-pilot seats a tad bit just to allow players to get in and out a little easier. So with white box, not the prettiest stage in the process, but it is essential that we nail this because it means we'll be able to deliver a beautiful ship that is also extremely fun to play. And everything fits inside of it. Because they've made that mistake a few times. Yeah. So that was the RSI Zeus in the three variants. Obviously, as the screen says behind me, it's available now on the Star Citizen website. You all follow that URL or the QR code behind me. I'm going to give it about a day before I go check the website on it. <laughs> now, we've just talked about the ship with the I'm longest give legacy. About 24 hours. Ever. It, it was the first the ship website seems to be running okay at the Let's moment. Let's change base a little bit. Yeah, they must have kicked in the extra server. Which newer ship. Mm. We're going to talk about the cutter. Ew. Yeah. I don't uh, know. This is the new variant. 
Yeah. No, so, that is just not the feeling base it. one right there. Last year, IE, we unveiled the cutter, and you guys seem to love it. Some interesting information about it. It was actually the single Bullet most ship. popular straight-to-flight ready ship we've ever released. You guys huh. really, really liked it. In addition to that, it's actually the best-selling Drake ship to date. Really? But yeah. what that say, surprises me. We kept a very good guarded secret that no one managed to figure out. No one. <laughs> there was always meant to be a family of three. The scout version, let me guess. Now, what everyone is already familiar with is the base. That's the version that's out in the universe right now that you're already enjoying. Oh, the redacted. The oh, the redacted. Is we're going to talk about the next version. Well, we, know we didn't know about the redacted, or the or its twin brother, the redacted. A scout. Uh. All right, let's just take a minute. Info runner so shared this information already. Work remember, that the R team has done pushing this guy out. Yeah, I don't really care for this. I'm not a big. I mean, it has its place for me personally. I'm like, nah. Yeah, it's a, a flying RV. <laughs> well, I mean, it has its place. It's, it's a great little starter ship. It really is. It's just I don't have a need for it. When the original scout kind of was, I mean, when the original cutter was role, released, like it helped us to refine the Drake aesthetic. Yeah. And now well, with the variants, we'll be able to add these a are unique identity to starter each ships. Version. So they on the scout, they we will decided to get replace the main thrusters with a dual thruster into system. That a role, like as a and you'll see here we've also ship. added a radar dish to the top, which relates directly to yeah. the scanning gameplay that comes with this ship. Oh. In addition to that, Ooh. we have a series of exterior bottom modifications. Scanning game, game play, just push that flavor that a little bit further. And you'll see okay, here then. a transition between the default and the scout. You're finally going to be able to use the damn terrapin? Yeah, right. right. Put the turtle to use. Mm -hmm. so, we won't see these for uh, a long time then, or what? It does seem like it has an extra thruster on it, doesn't it? No, it, does. it went from a no, single to a double on the on the rotating engine. Is that what it is? It's yeah. in the store, yeah. 45 bucks. So, scanning already uh, here? That's on the insane. interior, it's on a lucky day, expanded the it's rear section of the ship in, the in order to include wow. a dedicated scout, standing scanning ready. station, which will show up here nice. in a second. The cutter scout is now. Along with that, we've also increased available. the space in the rear to house the larger components that are necessary to support that gameplay. Now, expanding the rear did encroach into the habitation, but we were able to rearrange the components in that room so that nothing was lost in the transition. And on the cockpit, it's the same cockpit that you all know and love from the original cutter. Armored up. From this view, you'll more clearly see the shift that we had to make in the rear in order to support the gameplay that we're trying to achieve. Am I the only one that surprised the Corsair didn't have scanning on it? I mean, it's supposed to be an exploration vessel. We're yeah, really right? proud yeah. of what the I'm Like, where the fuck's the scanning? We hope is. This, its little baby brother gets it, but it doesn't? What the fuck? This is the, uh, it's for the, the good old exploration where you use your eyes. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, the yeah, most so unreliable tool. Obviously, the <laughs> right. what the big difference is for well, the base. Well, I mean, it's well. for exploring cargo. So the first big difference <laughs> is much. the radar. <laughs> it has a size 2 radar, and to accommodate to supply that, it comes with a size 2 power plant and a size 2 cooler. Size two I'm not cooler. really a fan of the... Long words. To as well as the uh, dedicated scan terminal uh, that Ella mentioned earlier. No, I mean, obviously, as you saw, habitation got a little bit cozier. Yeah. I see its place. I see its place, but it's just I don't I don't I don't I don't need one. I don't need one. Yeah. Yeah. Or do you want one? one? Correct. Now, Both. <laughs> completely correct. What I do is talk a little bit more about the future of scanning. If people are interested in hearing about that. Yes. 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 And tell me it'll be in January. So what is the future of scanning? We'll touch on it lightly. At the moment, there are two main ways for you to interact with the scanning gameplay loops. The first one's like obviously the scan, there. and the second one's the ping system. You've got the scout, Both the of these are going to be merged into a single a... system. Yeah, scan. gee, I know what's going to happen when next. You scan yeah. out, if you get any <laughs> successful pings, what will happen Why is, he is it will populate your hood right? with an AR He's a friendly guy. You information about what he keeps waving at me. As well as starting <laughs> to give you... <laughs> Far more interesting information than you get now. Why did he just, just turn red all of a sudden? I don't know. <laughs> underlying system. That means he's happy. System, so <laughs> uh, okay. Today. And I gotcha. There are two main scans. There is the quick scan, 
the quick scan is just a low version of it. It has a very small impact on your own signal output. So if you want to stay a little bit more covert and potentially not be seen, looking at something you shouldn't, you can use that one instead. The main benefits are small increase to your actual passive detection range, as well as being able to detect things that maybe are a little fainter than you should be able to see. This has a decent amount of cutting through interference, but not phenomenal. The other version is the charge scan. The yeah, charge the audio guy is definitely scan. getting better. Uh, this will actually allow you to detect things up to quantum boost range, which is way, way further than the current passive detection range. And not only that, but it'll actually drop a marker allowing you to jump straight to that location. Oh, yeah. oh that's awesome. The marker's awesome. Let us buy those in the store and deploy them in space, please. You, you don't want to be jumping in blind. And as I said, it's going to give you way that more information than it did before. Yeah, we'd have to take those little car, those little package missions anymore and leave them floating in space. Things like whatever it is, is it charging a quantum drive? Is it firing? Is the shields generating? Does it have any shields? Is it perhaps charging an EMP? Maybe it's got a snare up trying to catch you. It, it like gives you that additional you information so you can make the decision when you actually... Well, the Terrapin's supposed to do all this case. shit, though, remember? Mm -hmm. So that's just a brief glimpse into... Well, he's just talking about, uh, he's talking about scanning, what scanning, scanning, scanning gameplay in general here. Yeah. So. Right now, also the, the scan is actually in 2021. So I'm scanning in data. If you go to that mm. address or go to our website, QR code, it's actually, it's actually in the universe right now. You don't need to wait for a patch for that. Oh, never mind. I retract my statement about the audio guy. And before place. we step off, yeah, he is confused. Had a to get one of these hats. This one in particular is signed by seven members of the ship development team. And if you want it, when, during the meet and greet, if you can tell me the name of the seven people who signed this, all of who are in attendance here, by the way, today, the first person to give me those names gets to keep it. Other than that, thanks, small, guys, and have a great sitcom. Small hit for you. John Crew is one of those names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic guys, everyone. We're going to hand you back to John and Ben. They've got a few more surprises for you. Oh, please, no more ships. My credit card can't take it anymore. Come on, Capital more. Ships. Uh, we on. haven't had one that was over more. over 200 yeah, bucks yet. It's the third variant. Right. Come on. Yeah, they didn't so, even talk about the third variant. There's Mark <laughs> said there. Scanning stuff. It's coming in the future. In the... Um, we didn't show a lot of it in the store page uh, because it does uh, sort of the, turn up uh, in some uh, other the, team's uh, panels uh, and we didn't want to steal their glory uh, day early. So I highly recommend sticking around for two, both the UI third. one and the flight one tomorrow. Oh, so we're not gonna steal we talked about the past, glory. we talked about the present. Let's talk about the future. So here is a big block of squares that represents our backlog. So each one of these squares is a ship or a vehicle. Wow. Uh, all the light blue ones. There's more unreleased ships than that, guys. All those gray ones are the ones that we have not done yep. yet. The dark blue ones are the ones that will be in your hands by the end of the year. Holy shit. So we have that, over 200 like vehicles, vehicles for us to support as a vehicle content team. Wow. Um, for those of you that are trying to do the, the math in your head right now, going. That's, that's the wrong number. This includes uh, every single vehicle that we've ever shown to you, whether that's in a Squadron 42 visual tease right. or like a, um, a trailer. Some of them Twelve are obviously ships. Squadron exclusives. Some of them are going to be NPC exclusives. We still have to support them all. So every vehicle in the game, we have our hands on and we we do a lot of work to support them for you. Didn't Info Runners do one like this and show the unreleased show, or is it Space Tomato? I think it was Space Tomato did one like uh, this. We deliver previous promised content, I'm and sure. as you'll see today and tomorrow, we do a lot of gameplay support. So obviously we help out. Ships are like the heroes of the game. Right, Luz? Uh, you saw in the Resource there Network uh, engineering that they uh, panel how that's going to impact that's... ships. Uh, I don't know. Seen if you've been the, paying you got you got the Apollos. There's uh, two right there. They're not released. The SRV. There's three. Stay tuned for that. Crucible uh, four. We do all that. Vulcan five. I mean, I'm just not even straining to pull names out of my ass here. Aspects of both projects. Mm, don't forget the Idris. Uh, and to do all that. Uh, that's true. Idris, uh, Polaris, Perseus. Javelin. Yeah, the Javelin, the yeah. mine layer guy, the Nautilus. Kind of take a bit of how how are we the Crucible, the Endeavor. Yeah. Yeah, the Endeavor, that's true. The whole D, the whole B, the whole E. 
uh, the Legionnaire. Studio. True. Forgot about the Legionnaire. The Liberator. Yeah, it's true. Air Canada. There's a lot. Um, yeah, I don't think those numbers are accurate. We've Not by a long got, shot. Um, five artists or vehicle artists. Uh, one Maybe vehicle designer, like with the one embedded QA tester, and one producer. I'm and sorry. That kind of gives us with the power, we need. Maybe they're classing that as like one block location. and not two blocks. Could be. So um, that's what I'm saying. Maybe. And it also yeah, it means that we now have kind of reps globally for the vehicle content team in all five of our the studios. Vulcan. What's True. really nice thing about Vulcan. that is, is it kind of opens up a new pool of a kind of talent that we can pick from. And it should you know, really help us to deliver some more content to the game. And you've actually just seen the first the, two uh, ships out of that studio. Radii. So the Scout yeah. Variant so, and uh, our game oh. both being developed by our Montreal team. We haven't heard anything team. about drones. Yeah. No, they're, and, they're, they're and the Apollo's a drone ship. Uh -huh. The Vulcan's a drone ship. The Crucible's a drone ship. Yeah, um, we we're going to look a little bit more in depth at the, mm -hmm. the art team. And, said and that the Zeus would be straight over the years. too flyable. Oh, yeah. Um, it says concept everywhere I'm seeing. This is our kind of like line yeah. numbers of how many vehicle artists we have dedicated to the project. I, 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 um, you can see there's like the analysis yeah, too. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, the, uh, and, you know, with more team yeah. members, uh, that also means we get uh, kind of like we not just more people to throw at stuff, but we get more experience, we get more knowledge. Um, and that's, oh, you know, right. that allows us to kind of tackle our larger, oh, really? kind of more complex ships. Like you will notice the there in 2022, no. there is a, a little bit. Um, and, you know, the, unfortunately, uh, when, the, when that happens, oh, the mines are drones? I didn't know that. has kind of real consequences what, on what we are able to do as a team. Uh, I think, you know, think that's less people, cargo, so cargo, less power to put on stuff, but also some of that knowledge leaves us. With that, that leads us to have to make some kind of pretty hard and heavy decisions about what we're working on. And I think most recently and probably most well known is the Banu Merchantman. Oh, yeah. I heard Banu. Now, Listen to this, Luce. Banu. A quick look yeah. at where we got to with the Merchantman, just to show where we were up to before that happened in 2022. Uh oh. Wait, they said to show you where we were before 22? Yeah. So they so were this... where they're going to be. Oh, oh. boy. Oh no, look did at I, that. Did you say Bandu or Bandu? Bandu, B A N U. The docking rings in midair. Like one that? of the alien That's races. Nice. Yeah, there's my measurement boys. She looks a little bit more complete now. This is what he. Uh, he said this is from 22. Remember, the whole team left. Man, that's a shame. Because that's yeah, cool. well, the scuttlebutt that I heard was the whole development team that was working on it walked out the doors. So, so it's actually, um, I think it was Tomato that was saying it. It's actually not true. There was only two or three that left. The others were reassigned. So yeah, they left. Yeah, nine. see, now that's what I had heard, too. She's bigger. Oh, look at that. She's pretty, but... To be honest, I actually like the original concept for it a bit better than the new one. Well, I remember seeing internal pictures that had like that, that shiny metallic paint on it and the chairs that were levitated for the pilots. Remember all that? Visionaries on it left, so the team that was disbanded. Junior engineers, engineers we're not, we're not going to carry this. Okay. So the team that actually makes it happen is still there, but the team that makes it up isn't there. That's what it sounds like. God damn it, man! Adjust your audio. Thank you, Luis. I'm sorry. I'm trying hard to balance the audio here, folks. Floating chair. See now. No, wait. Okay, whatever. It's the barber chair. Is our map? Yep. Looks about right. <laughs> Stack books? Maybe? I don't know. It doesn't look like I could. Collector indoctrination pods. Right. 
<laughs> educational pods. Is this your shopping area? Yeah, it's the shopping area. Look yeah. at that shopping area. Yeah, see, now we saw that, but I thought the one that we saw had like a had like a metallic uh, texture on it. There we go. Oh, is this the one we saw? Yeah, yeah this is the one we saw here. This is the one we saw on the ISC. It's a sleeping area. It's, a, it's where you sleep. It's the orgy room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> the sex room. Yeah. Maybe. Just make sure you're not the bottom guy. <laughs> yeah, the outside of it kind of reminds me of like the uh, the texture along uh, Moira from Farscape. Yeah, I feel like that should that ship should be able to float. <laughs> yeah, anti grav. <laughs> I mean, in... Sorry, that was not very that was not very polite. Funny, but not very polite. So that video shows you know, where we got up to with the merchantman. You can see we finished white box. Hey. We were kind of in gray box. Some areas were further than others. And I think one of the best things about working at a company like Cloud Imperium Games is that we're able to be pretty honest and pretty open with our development. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest questions we get is, what's up with the Merchantman? Where is it? Why did it stop? Yeah, you guys can't see the face I'm um, making. And <laughs> you know, the Merchantman brought a lot of unique challenges. Are they going to say they're back working us. on it? It was a completely I new art style, something that's very, so very you different know, the from what is we not normally in do with our human manufacturers. <laughs> If it was, it'd be I mean, like 600 bucks, good. 700 bucks. He just, he just we could have paused other ships. We could have moved some of our other artists yeah. onto the merchant. That's where they were up until like but 22. But with the kind of exodus of our kind of senior team in 2022, yeah. um, we didn't just lose people. We lost a lot of the knowledge that went into building out that white box and really kind of delivering that art style. What we decided to do at the time is rather than try and rush something out and just get something out to, to get it done, we looked at where we were, and for us, the most important thing was growing our team back up. We wanted to invest in our team and smart use our seniors and our kind of managers to help get us up to the point where you know, we can tackle multiple large and capital ships at one time. Nice. I think the graph previously kind of showed that you know, we've got the head numbers now, and now it's about onboarding our new staff members. It's about skilling them up and getting them to the point and i would absolutely love to be stood here on the stage and going yeah look at the merchant it's amazing like it's you know it's done um but we're not at that point just yet we do see all the comments i do see all the the notes about it and you know i absolutely want to get this ship out and done um and you know we'll yeah i just wanted to be open and honest as to where we are up to with the development yeah uh, to, to add to that it is probably the most question i get asked at any event, <laughs> and I really want to get done and get it out for you guys, but we don't want to give you a half-baked thing. We want to give you a really great product that we can all be proud of, and it delivered a long time. I gotta respect gameplay. that. So sure. I like that he's being honest. Let's talk about something I else. Do. Quickly. I don't like the news, but I'm glad that he's honest. So Squadron 42 just want vehicles. Them to go to the original concept. Oh, what on. is this? Hold on. I don't know what How this many is. You have uh, any dress of some I, do. I have one. <laughs> uh, Everything up from right. that. So, we plan to deliver the address alongside the squadron. Alongside squadron. Okay, cool. <laughs> and that doesn't mean there you go. just the M. We're going to deliver the M, the P, and the K kit all together nice. in one nice. delivery. I have there you one. Go. There you go, Ferris. Javelin owners, I'm afraid, you're going to have to wait a bit longer after that. Is obviously Son the bigger Bob. ship players can own. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have recently looked at what is left to deliver on it. We've There's your plans. MPUV. There will be modularity with it. Um, and yeah, that will come after squadron releases. Interest better. And those of you who also have uh, the Vandal Scythe, Glaive, Blade, after squadron releases, yeah. Yeah, you will Lewis, also get the updated uh, models just as well give me for the that. Of the loaner, please. Oh, I'm sure they will. Right. Next. Okay. No kind of ship panel at a CitizenCon event is kind of done without looking at what's coming up next. Um, you have to talk about the previously, plans. we used to do these kind of like silhouettes, um, but we, we kind of always felt they were a little bit predictable. We ended up just making most of them anyway. 
Um, so, yeah. so, so last I'm like, year, why even bother, guys? Up, we, uh, we asked what manufacturer do we want to see uh, make our next large mining ship. Um, and you're going to see more about that at IEE <laughs> next month. Um, but again, this year, we decided just to mix things up a little bit with how we wanted to deliver this. So you're about to see in a minute a video. Uh, it shows uh, some ships you might recognize. Hopefully, it will show you some that you don't recognize. Um, but feel free to get on Spectrum afterwards, take a look, give us a guess at what you think they might be, because um, we'd love to you know, hear your input. And I will just add to that as well. Oh. We aim to deliver everything you see in this video and more in the next 12 months. So, am I okay. am I inferring incorrectly here that Squadron is going to be out in 12 New months? New hoverbikes. It's what it's sounding like. Yeah, it's, it's really sounds like. like that. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. There's the X1. Mm -hmm. That's the Lynx. Lynx. Or yeah. the uh, Rover. Argo. The MP. That interesting take on the. I don't recognize. Well, it's supposed to be modular. You're supposed to be able to have different variants. It's That's the person, yeah. the. The Polaris? The Dorito. Yeah, the C. Oh. It was the C1. Galaxy, I'm sorry. Yeah. Ooh, Legionnaire coming. Yes. Yeah. Legionnaire yeah. coming next year. Fuck yeah. yes. Oh, Nautilus? Oh, Nautilus? Galaxy. That's the Zeus, I think? No, Galaxy? Uh, Retaliator? We Retaliator. already have the Retaliator. Retaliator. There's a two of them. Oh, maybe it's the base. It may be the Polaris. base. Polaris! Polaris! That's yeah, that was the Zeus. There's the Polaris. Finally, Polaris fuckers. Polaris coming out next year. I don't know if you he noticed, but there was quite a big ship at the end of that video. Yeah, come on. Uh, and yeah, just to confirm, <laughs> that is the Polaris. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, I might need to change uh, my underwear we, now. We, we've done a lot of talking. <laughs> uh, we'll do a bit more talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. <laughs> Just wanted to touch again on like, yeah, why are we doing an RSI ship? Like, what is with that? So, it's literally the name RSI of the company. That's why you're doing an RSI really ship. Well Let's be true. Art style for RSI in our in our universe. Like I want my ship. Um, and it gives us the ability to kind of skip, or train up newest members of the teams on something that's kind of quite a known element. That is absolutely not the only benefit, though. The way we are like planning on tackling the Polaris is not tackling it as one ship. But actually, we want to tackle, well, anyone that knows our backlog knows we have a number of large RSI ships on there. Mm -hmm. And our kind of plan is that we tackle that as a family of ships. We don't just tackle one of them and then we go off and do something else for six months, a year, come back and do another one, something else, come back and do another one. We want to tackle them all together, one after the other. And what that really allows us to do is just kind of streamline our development process. We're able yeah, to, you know, for our... Well, they're going to share, they're share, they're gonna share they're assets, assets too. So, so once they build the Polaris, they can use the same parts for the Perseus. And, and then, then that allows us to focus True. our development That's time and our efforts really on the much more unique... I know, right, Luz, they burst a lot. ...areas of each ship. It, tackling them as a family kind of allows us to expedite their development. We leverage the experience that we've got within the team. And it just allows us to, like I say, streamline everything. So first up, we've got the Polaris. Next up, we've got the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Then we've got the Perseus. And that Makes kind sense. of closes out our, most of our large RSI ships. And then we can mm -hmm. you know, see what we want to take so on. Could we see those next that. year too? Well, I, I think that's I think pretty much everything we want to talk to about Ryan. today. Um, RSI. However, before we go, we're, we're going to... Yeah. Torsten's already stolen the, the predictable joke here. So we'll do one last thing to show you guys. So let's have a look at the current state of the Polaris yes. in engine yes. in its white box. Good yes. deal. All right, here you go. I'm going to need a change of underwear after this. Oh, oh look at that baby. <laughs> Holy shit. God, she's, she's thick. But no, she definitely is rough, though. But getting better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, look at those missiles on the side. That's about a missile. Right, Crumpet? Oh, They're going to have to hose down all those chairs. <laughs> now now we know why they use chairs and not benches. <laughs> God damn it. The third one today. It's been sticky. God. What is it Pam always says in Archer? Sploosh. Sploosh. 
Sploosh. It's a it's big. Uh, Corvette class. So it's, 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 it's like, uh, yeah, turn it down. That music's loud as fuck. Oh, look at the engine room. I've seen a bunch of white boxes here, buddies. <laughs> I think she's bigger than a hammerhead, isn't she? Yeah, she's definitely she's bigger than a whole lot bigger. Yeah. yeah. Torpedo room. Those are some big torpedoes. Those are size tens. So, yeah. 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 They're yeah, those, they're capital they're ship this, killers. Yeah, they're it, if I'm not, a fucking capital ship. Go ahead. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're both. If I walk, it's, the it's movie will be over. Yeah. Idris. It's, it's Idris. Idris. And what's that? That's a frigate. Yeah. Right, Luz? Oh, oh yes. What, what just came out of it? A saber? Nope. Uh, the X-Wing. Uh, Scorpius. Scorpius and some torpedoes. Oh, shit. Fez, you're about to cry. Are we too- I'm sorry, Ferris. You're interested with the bite. Four torpedoes confirmed to kill a Idris? And I'm trying to remember how many that thing has on it. Hey, Fegan, what's up, buddy? It's got hey. like 20 of those. They launched, yes. they launched the ship to protect the torpedoes. They launched the uh, ship to take out the enemy fighter that the frigate launched. Uh -oh. <clears throat> I'm going to be flying that thing every day. <laughs> and I'll be chasing you with my little Polaris every day. Like, ferrets, hey, I have ferrets. something ferrets for you. The they punched a hole in it. Oh, did you guys see that? that was wow, crazy. dude, stop that raping that or stop that was chowing down on that microphone, dude. To show you he needs to learn to back the fuck off. If you're not here at the convention center, come follow me a little bit. We're going to go on a little bit of a journey down just a see the leisurely Sunday center, road drive. And when I drive, I take my favorite... The poor sound guy. He's probably got a migraine by now. Because remember, he's wearing headphones for this shit. With a fresh... Can't hit me with a torpedo if I'm flying something smaller than a torpedo, right? In the digital goodies pack if you purchase it now. He does it like Sam from Game of, of Thrones. I got it now. I got JRDF a question. did an amazing that was the job of making the dragonfly. I'm sorry. Not a word about the SRV. Here we have the pyro amount. Uh, we've heard uh, bupkis. Label, I guess you would call that. I don't know what you would call it. I'm not a car guy. I'm not a Drake guy. We have like what? Cool details Dude, design. you not know your Let's audience? Hop on it. Let's see. How bad like 60% of Star Citizen backers are Drake fanboys and fangirls. Right, even if they don't personally own one, they love the style. Up here, but it He's definitely like fired. You're about to drive a dragonfly. If you guys are still here at the show floor, you be sure to check out the Drake Dragonfly. Shut up! You, really just want to like drive this you know that, like, what's that feeling you have where you're like on a balcony? And you like you look over the balcony, and you're like, there's a little internal. It's like, it's like, He's been fired twice. He's not eligible for rehire. Is driving. <laughs> hey, Charles gonna burn his file when he leaves. Fly right now. <laughs> this is so cool. We have photographers taking photos. If you guys are interested in looking at your photos afterwards, Shane, I'm sorry, I'll pass on a photo of you on the dragonfly. I'm sure we'll tweet it out. Galaxia. You can on, get Galaxy on there though. That'd be just fine. Anyways. I'll cut it back Burn his desk and mic. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Take that shirt off. You don't deserve to wear the shirt. I'm a little disappointed that. We All right, didn't so we are forget. here with members of the uh, vehicle oh, team. Then he uh, more straight I to say, uh, at the start of the show, I made it very clear that marketing did not make the colors only one we've seen so far. In those days. I can't help but notice uh, that Polaris took out that Idris really quick. Are you start trying to start about 50 different arguments on Reddit? Yes. Yeah. We, we love for the uh, arguments. Love them. Polaris for life. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it, ferrets. Suck it. Beatrice. <laughs> she will reign supreme, just you watch. Yeah, she's going to reign all right in thousands of little pieces. Oh, oh, shit, Quiet, shit. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Ferris. I'm gonna have to go to the pagan on the other one. And how many? How uh, many would you like to revise your answer? Pretty good. In here. F the address. So if the address was, I mean, I have up, one. If the address was headed to the opinions of Ellen Batchel Jr. represent those of Clad Imperium Games. Doesn't the address have a big giant gun series. on the front? Yeah. It's got yep. a big rail gun, but yeah. it's got to get it on you. That's my point. 
Don't look at us. <laughs> ben Parr's off the side. It's like just. <laughs> yeah, as as All right, get so the uh, the Zeus. She should be uh, First question down. that I see a lot of people had on, on Twitch watching the stream is obviously it doesn't look like the Zeus that we've all known from the lore and stuff. I mean, I think the first image of the Zeus was probably in 2012 or 2013 yeah, was... in that really early lore post. Why did we change it? Uh, oh, like how you just hands in the mic. Like, have fun with that. I wasn't. <laughs> uh, so, there's a there's a few things. Obviously, it was built as a product of its time, both in law and back in the day. <laughs> I was too busy looking at how <laughs> handsome you look. Oh, thank you. Oh, bitch, um, but also, and I think Ben will probably want to talk about more of this. Is it, we have design languages for RSI now, and it doesn't really fit in with them anymore. Yeah, I think yeah. When we look at uh, reimagining one of our, our ships, our manufacturers, um, we didn't want to just release the classic mini today. We wanted to look at it and my well, today. So maybe tomorrow? Uh, no. Um, so uh, what we wanted to do was you know bring it up to standard, both in terms of its you know quality and, and what it can deliver as a ship, but also visually. I think you know RSI has grown as a manufacturer over the years. Um, I think you know you can see how not all ships roll off the production line in day one. They're, each of our manufacturers also have a history, and I think it's fine to see progression for that throughout the timeline of our game. Sorry, Zach. J just say you hate the Zeus. But <laughs> it, it's not just the visuals of it, though. It's important that the amount of time it would take to get your jalopy, because that's why I ask, and up to level. Oh, here we go. Here I didn't do it, he did it. He did it. This is the real reason. <laughs> You're going to be in the center. <laughs> <laughs> Every time the, the amount of time it takes to actually get a ship, like the amount of time it takes to get a ship actually you, quite ready in the universe, it would be a lot of work to get something that, for the most part, has about the same amount of space as a spatial, and you wouldn't be able to use any of the gameplay. But you wouldn't be able to fill it with cargo. It'd be really difficult getting out. And if we're spending that amount of time getting something flight ready in the universe, we'd much rather give you something you can engage with and do. I didn't touch you. Just do. Me. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> do more with it, it's fun. It's far more interesting to get a ship that you can do bounty hunting in or cargo in or. Yeah. Off, <laughs> Poor Jared. Off. It's going to be one of those live streams, huh? <laughs> All right, we're almost at the end. We're almost oh, at the okay, end. Okay, All right, fair. so yeah, enough yeah, about yeah. what the Zeus isn't. The Zeus, favorite thing, top of your head, what's your favorite thing about the Zeus? Ellen. Oh, F the address. <laughs> Mark, favorite thing about the Zeus? EMP, quantum dampener. Okay, favorite thing about the Zeus? Uh, the. White and black color scheme. Mm. Favorite, thing about the, favorite thing about the Zeus? Uh, it's belly. It's got a really lovely, sleek belly. Like it's He's a belly, belly man. I didn't <laughs> figure that. <laughs> Jared's like, I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going <laughs> to say a word. Don't say a word, Jared. Don't say a word, Jared. <laughs> say it, Jared. Say it. <laughs> he wants to. You can see it's so bad. <laughs> Bring it. I just had this image of a Zeus wearing Spanx. <laughs> 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 what are you laughing at? <laughs> All right. So we also talked about the Cutter Scout. Uh, is this the last variant of the Cutter we're going to see? Uh, when we first introduced the Cutter, we said it was a, a platform ripe for future variants. Is this the the last Cutter variant that's on the thing, or can, can you maybe no, tease agree, it in the future? They haven't talked about. Absolutely not. There was there was obviously that mysteriously third blurred image. Uh, so Montreal, the Montreal team. Uh, did both of them as basically their, their first onboarding task into the vehicle pipeline. Both of them are done now. Uh, so you will see the third one soon, TM. Hey. You just have a done spaceship Saving and you're it for not a. putting it out there. Wait, which one's done? Strange. We don't know yet. Oh. They've got all three variants done. They just released the second one now. They're got, I'm betting the third That one's entire be talk a. about the pipeline was BS. You've got a done spaceship. Put it out, John Crew. No, we've just really streamlined it. It's about the belly. Oh. All right. <laughs> we're, we're working with diminishing returns here, so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, Dan. Uh, he's back in Hall B. Uh, I think he's at the merch booth. Uh, Dan, what do you got for us? Well, the opposite of diminishing returns is amazing. I'm sorry? I am 
I'm here at the Merch booth. <laughs> they were zooming the, the end of the onto his to the, to the belly. Home, yeah. The near the end of it. That's fair. You guys should have <laughs> yeah. been here, and I'm very sad yeah. you're not here. But don't worry. Jared was rubbing his tummy, too. Here. Most of the merch on display behind me is available for you guys to pick up at the RSI Pledge Store right now. There are Wasn't there another part to today's, or am I just tripping balls here? Only for account attendees. No, so if you're here at the show floor, There's come over to the Merch booth. The line was astronomical earlier today. It's much more manageable now, so if you haven't navigating the universe yet, now might be a good time to make your way over to the merch booth and so pick up some stuff. Work, I was given a, a sweet I box as know. an early Luminalia present, so we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing to show you guys some of the cool stuff. And I mentioned earlier that I helped the subscriber um, program at one point, and one of my bit, favorite so pieces of subscriber flair that I was responsible for was the CDF bobbleheads. We have brought them to life, so finally. I know everyone has been asking for Destination. Oh, wait, no, wrong one. Navigating the universe so starts at... You can see four the, and ends that people are blocking the way. Looks like it's about an Trust hour me, they look long. Exactly like the ones in game. They're super cool, it's about super awesome. Again, if you want a little a bit of the verse in your home, the, pick up a bobblehead on your way out. Then you close this. Yeah. Manalia claws. Yeah. For your um, they did bobblehead. This is hard to do with one hand. What else we got here? We suggested. We have this very nice. People keep saying we only make black shirts. I'm dropping this down. You guys can read about the merch later. We now have an orange shirts. Take that. And um, I believe that they actually said earlier when they first started this the stream they today, gave me this for a bit we i'm probably right just about a steal hidden panel to be honest i believe they said something about you guys it. won't tell right? oh, is that what it was hey no narc yeah, yeah there's a hidden everyone panel everyone chat be cool yeah so there's two panels left i think and we finally so, oh, man this is so cool i've heard about, the about the this but panel. this is like yeah, I'm looking through the loner ship matrix, and I am not seeing an assigned loner for the Zeus. See, on the sleeves, we have Gion Probably hasn't updated it yet. They normally, they, they normally update it when the ship goes on sale, though, so you know. So whatever they say, I'm but sure it's something it's very profound and wise from these alien The what? Like, again, I'm just going to steal this, so. Considering Sorry, it's roughly around the same size. Yeah, it could be. Merch, you're not going to get them. Sure. Now, we do, again, have three exclusive merch items for people who are here at CizzleCon. Get a low chart. We have a pyro t-shirt, huh. and we have two Jared. autographs. I don't know if you can get... Oh. get... <laughs> I can't take him anywhere. <laughs> Truly, I cannot. Um, I don't know if you're able to see that burn pyro t-shirt off over there. That is exclusive to people who are here at CitizenCon 2953. Also in the middle there, we have... Or people who buy a fuck ton of them and put them up for sale on eBay. Exclusive. This guy. I can't take him anywhere. Who was that man? Somebody who probably forgot no to take his medication sure. this morning. Uh, but yes, we have those two <laughs> exclusive art pieces for people who are here at CizzenCon 2953. Oh, what's this? Oh, They're probably running oh my God. That strange yeah. homeless sure looking man forgot? also gave me these AirPod cases with a little Finley attached with it. You know what? Maybe that guy was all right. Whoever he is, I hope he's having a good day. Huh. But I actually do need new AirPod cases. So again, like everything else, I'm just going to keep this. I think that wraps it up for me, so I'm going to throw it back to the main convention floor. Uh, there's going to be a lot more stuff here at CizzenCon. You guys will see it either later today or tomorrow. See you guys then. Man, I have to say, it's a, this has been a very busy day for us so far. Oh, yeah. 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 Still got more. <clears throat> oh, I know. I can't wait to see what's going on tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Fegan, you too? That's that's the same vibe I get too. Like he's, like he's trying a little too hard. Yeah. I, I, I gotta say though, so far overall, I think they're really hitting good. Yeah. 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 To be honest, it. it yeah. Go ahead, please. Uh, just, just we knew they had to hit big with this one. And I think they're really doing it. Mm hmm. Yeah. There's. Uh, I mean. Mm -hmm. Sorry, good. Go ahead. No. No. Go ahead. Um, good. Uh, I. I don't know. I I almost never buy a four pod, but I I immediately bought the uh, the Zeus. So <laughs> I, I'm I'm probably not the only one who. Uh, there's probably a lot uh, of people who did that. Today. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm eyeballing it, and I'm like, do I do? I mean, does does it have a place in my hanger? And I'm like, mm, no, but it looks cool. My problem well, is, I, I I'm wanting to upgrade my Carter ship. I've got I've got the raft right now. I'm not liking how they're, they're, it's turning out with the cargo crap. I'm mm -hmm. really wanting to change up. I've been thinking about going on up to a Caterpillar, but I'm really not wanting to go to a big, big ship for my hangar. 
Mm -hmm. God, that Zeus is looking very, very tempting. Yeah, I. That's probably end up in my daily driver. So I, I, I was for ever since this, they announced the C one last year. I was like, yep, that's gonna be it. That's gonna be the step <sighs> now. Yeah, I just got two new emails from Star Citizen or Robert Space Industries about their releases for the two ships. Yeah, C one looks cool, but the Cutter I'm Scout. One the one, I'm one of the ones. Yep, I have to have. Part two. I have to have room for the rock. Well, why? Well, I have uh, room someone for just it. T posed in front of the camera. Yeah, I see him in the back. T posings. So smaller cargo ships. Okay, so if you get a C2 in game, and it's as big as it is, and it can carry anything you want, why would you want the smaller ships? Yes, the convention crowd <laughs> starting the T pose. <laughs> have you, Love have it. you tried to land one of the big ships at an outpost? Well, it's I like not easy. I used to land the C2 all the time. That's been my daily driver. Yeah, I, I've landed a reclaimer at outpost. Yeah. I think that qualifies as a big ship. Yeah, yeah, but it's faster to get a small ship in and out. Consumes less fuel. <laughs> you're yeah, a smaller yeah. target. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I guess if, 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 if you're not carrying 32 SCU boxes. Yeah. I guess my question is, what what's the spread? You know, I mean, if, if, if yeah, they don't give us the ability to break up the boxes, so if you get some, if you come across a ship or where you want to carry stuff and you can't break up the boxes. How much cargo space does it hold? Look. That's why I want to look at that cargo variant again. I want thirty-two. See, I, I want to see if it's got this. If it's got the space for a thirty-two SCU box. It does. Well, it says thirty-two. I'm looking at it now on the page. Here you go. Are we talking about the Zeus CL True Three Thirty-Two SCU One Size Three Radar Size Three Shields Two Four Size Twos Four Size Two Shields. That's going to take a while to get you down. Yeah. Sorry, doesn't Good. the ES have 32 and the CL has double that? I don't know what to tell you. I think the 32 that you're reading up there is is the, uh, the ES. Holy fuck it is. Yeah. 128 for the CL, my bad. Good call there, gamers. Competitor for the Freelancer Max, which is 120. Yeah. Yeah, 128 for the CL. That That's... That's more than the yeah, MSR. I want to know. I, I want to look at that. That uh, they had a flyover of the uh, cargo of the cargo area, uh, but I didn't Wait, get a good look at it. I want to go back and look at that, and pause it, and see if they can fit a 32 SCU container in there. No, they'd have they to to go 128. The max if they can fit two, the max will hold two 32 SCU. Uh huh. Because I've, I've been using the max lately. Okay. But well, because it. you can't go, you can't. It doesn't go three high. It's you can't yeah. put anything on top of it. I was going to say, there, there are a lot of ships that technically should that don't. Like, for instance, a Caterpillar, you can't technically put a 32 SU on it. So it's 16 M, uh, sixteen cargo for the MR. Uh -huh. And the ES is the 32 model. Yep. So okay. Well, that changes things a little bit. Does this mean Squadron 42 is coming out next year? Okay. Sounds it, like it. It, right, it Fagan? Love the T-Pose. Uh, that sure should it sounds like what they're hinting at, but I'm pretty sure Sierra wants to be the one that says, uh, says it. Well, because yeah. he would be pissed if somebody else said it. That it's feature complete, so. Yeah, because they well, said that the um, the addresses were going to come out within the next year, and they that's said what they, they said. Completion of they they've they've hinted, yeah. they've strongly hinted. Yeah. So what's up next on the panels? Oh, uh, navigation, something or another, navigating space navigating or something. The yeah. Navigating the verse. Okay, right. so I'm hoping a new map. I'm gonna go hit the uh, the restroom real quick, folks. While we're doing this. I'll be right back. No, you must hold it. You cannot. No, they don't have a puddle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Soon to yeah. be able to close that. Oh wow, look at that. Someone's dressed okay. up as a... Uh, 
a Xeon. Uh. So they set the uh, the Zeus in a uh, white box. Yeah. I think the Zeus is gonna be like that. Yeah. I'd run it. I yeah. I so much money to do Honestly, I, 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 I like that. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the retaliator that we saw was the retaliator base, which is, is, is supposed to have modularity. Yeah. So, modularity yeah. coming next year, too? Yep. Yeah. Well, we, we know they're working on it. How are you doing, Los Angeles? So, yeah, really good timing. Yep. Oh, shit, I thought it was a guy from Apple for a second. <laughs> it's Tim Cook. Great to see you. <laughs> Hi. He looks a lot like Tim My Cook. My name's David, Jesus. but That's everyone creepy. calls me Bone. Don't, don't ask. Or maybe ask me later. It's because you're skinny, dude. That's why. <laughs> so, my job is to oversee all the uh, technical implementation of the UI across the company. And if I'm lucky, I get to do some programming from time to time. <laughs> A previous citizen con, uh, one in the flesh, uh, in Manchester, I talked about UI tech with my um, friend and colleague, Zane Bien. And we were making new tools and technology to help our developers with their, to develop their UI. So that was a few years ago now. And now I'm really privileged to share with you how this technology has been utilized by our talented designers to help pr improve your experience yeah. in the verse. Damn, so, it's along with some of my UI friends that are hidden out the back there, we'd like to show you some of these improvements British, which are going to help you, the players, navigate the Star Citizen universe. He's twin brother. It looks a lot yeah. like this guy. So, why are we doing this? <laughs> well, because Star Citizen is big. Really big. There's so many unique places, massive planets, moons, well, space stations, rest up. stops. You know, there's just loads. They probably of places pulled it out of the data files. We have a huge range of spaceships of all shapes and sizes, and there's enormous amount of things to do and see and people to meet, and all this can be shared with friends online. And as we've seen today, as our uh, amazing online technology grows, it takes great leaps, and our uh, online player count grows, the possibility, possibilities become almost endless. So how are we going to make sense of all this? Hmm. Right. <laughs> well, one of the main ways we do this is with a user interface, or UI for short. Uh, well, that's uh, where we come in, fortunately, being the UI guys. And we do this in loads of ways that you see already, whether it's uh, your vehicle MFDs, or the hood, or the kiosks, uh, where you get your spaceship, or you trade commodities, or buy weapons, and all manner of uh, diegetic UIs that you see, diegetic meaning like things in the world that you can interact with. But our first real opportunity is through the helmet visor display. Now, the visor display gives you vital information about your status and the environment around you. But this Via this, this display has gone through many iterations over the years, and it's been built upon and adapted. And um, I don't know if uh, who remembers Arena Commander 1.0 that came out. I do. 
I came mm -hmm. out about Halo probably does a year too. after I started, um, which was primarily space combat and racing, so the, the visor was geared towards that. And then it evolved the with our first adventures into the online universe. And as all the features get added and all these new things, the visor grows and we put things on it to show you and now uh, different now. statuses. You only get one like, loaner ship for that particular Tells you type. all about what's going on. So if you have five zoos, you just only get one one. We sometimes lose focus. There's so much we need to know. And when we need to know it is important. So how do we zero in on what's important and at what time? So leaning on this shooting, technology important. that Zane and I and the UI tech team wrote a few years ago, we tried to take a smart, smarter perspective and rework the visor for you. So I'm not going to tell you about that. I'm going to invite Simon Bursey onto the stage, and he can tell you more about it. Simon? Oh, thank God. This guy's starting the ball. You on this? Yeah. Hey, everybody. OK, so Star Citizen, as you know, is a big project. Check out memes and pics. I put a picture of Tim Cook in there. Early on in the project, you see what I mean. Visor, which is the display you see on your helmet when you're walking around the universe in first person. Ten bucks says each of these guys, each of these fuckers is carrying an iPhone in their pocket right now. Features. And with those come new UI. The various teams the slotted voice. pieces into one nice. whatever yeah, I'm telling you. made sense at the time. I'm telling you. They but probably watched a lot of the keynotes that Tim Cook did. As you can see, the current live UI can get very cluttered. You yeah, have lots of information the, uh, competing for your attention, so you don't always know where to look. Don't sometimes the overlaps there. can make things difficult to read. <laughs> so as you can probably tell, the UI class. team wanted to do a redesign. The Apple Watch. We wanted now to the movie glass is real. Experience by presenting the important information in a clear way. We also needed to create a new framework that supports all the existing features and allows us to add more in future. And, in your, and finally, we wanted to bring the visuals up to the high standard we're setting Dusty for Squadron Bro. 42 Just remember and to soon start off first. persistent universe. So how do we go about that? I believe user interface should always be a collaboration with the teams who build the underlying features. So we worked closely with them on a new layout, keeping some pieces, combining others, and maybe getting rid of a few. Once we'd figured out the design, we built a new framework using our 3D UI system. And then we worked closely with the various game teams to take all that complex data that existed before and hook it up to the new user interface. When we designed player-facing UI, we often well, tried to start with the worst top, case first, so we can see everything we have to deal with. It was important for us to keep the central area as clear as possible to make it easier for you to see the I'm underlying game. I'm going to maximize that, because that is really hard to, to fucking see. attach to the different parts of the view. And with each of those, we have a set of widgets that can show, hide, and stack when you need them. So I've told you about everything we wanted to achieve. But wouldn't it be great to see it in game? Does anybody here want to see a live demonstration? No. Fuck yes, I did. Come on. Bring it on. Good. I was hoping you'd say that, otherwise it would have been a very short yeah, demo. Okay. Yeah. So agreed, we're going to show you some of our one. new UI running live in the game. Everything you, think, everything you see is in real time, but I have to tell you, we've created a special mission just for the show, which is a I'm little sure. different to what you see in the live game. Special mission. Hey, okay. Chris. So. Hey, check out it's that girl from last night, or uh, uh, Friday night. I'm going to say Bone's name a lot, and the other guys too. Oh, so. Lord. She still hasn't recovered. Okay, welcome to the Orison Providence platform. The screen is you, may have up, it early. you may have spotted hey, it earlier, but today is the That's first the time we've shown the new visor we developed and tested in Squadron 42. Mm. But you'll be happy to know all the UI you see today is going to make its way to Star Citizen. I like that we have a compass now. But Finally. this is secret UEE Navy tech, so we'll give it a different look for the persistent universe. As you can see, the display is very clean by default. Many of the elements are contextual, meaning they appear when you need them to avoid cluttering the screen. Uh, okay. We've also temporarily hidden a couple of things so we can focus on them later in this demo. Okay, Bo, let's move into the scene, please. All right. 
Yeah, fair point. Vino, Vino Prime. Okay, when Vin, you get Prime, it's working in ultra wide. In the top right of the screen. And you can see that our first mission is to repair a radiation leak. We've done a major overhaul of the augmented reality marker system, so we can follow the yellow on-screen marker to get to our objective. At the top of the screen, you'll also see the compass. Oh, that's oh. cool. Okay, Bone, let's yeah, head towards like the objective. That. It's clean when you're not looking at it, but it has the information you need when you do look at it. Mm. We, were already ha we were already happy with the way the player status widgets worked, showing you contextual information like about your character and environment. Yeah, so to get your to get your attention. And added a yeah. few new ones. Remember the pyro mission last year, guys? Looks like we got the a environmental here. radiation here is quite high, and over time it will wear down our suit and damage the player. Oh, Looks wow. like we can see the source of the radiation there. Yeah. I think somebody's damaged a pipe. So how are we going to fix it? With your magic yellow gun. If we were in space, we could use a salvage and repair ship. Luckily. UEE have some advanced portable tech. Yeah, I figured it would Bone, be. Please equip the military multi tool. A new multi tool. Nice. The military multi tool from Squadron 42 has various modes, one of, it, one of which gives us the ability to salvage. I'm surprised they're allowed to show that. Foot. Okay, Bone, let's use the multi tool to. Chris that takes line. Squadron 42 like it's the Holy Grail. Well, remember, uh, we might be getting a Squadron 42 reveal here, so this could be. Uh, yeah. This could, could be not permitted. Okay. Right, we can see at the bottom left of the screen the because, radiation yeah, levels like are decreasing. You just said. He, so let's he, head into the he, scene. He takes um, leaks about Squadron 42 don't very worry. seriously. Oh, well, yeah, we know that already. So yeah. if he's allowing okay. this. Now we fix the damage, we need to find yeah. the enemies then that caused it. The fact that he well, on the way, already... The you'll notice that the, the, the on-foot emissions at the top of the screen. That the we're emitting infrared, electromagnetic is radiation, a, is and also sound. That, yeah, that you if any of these go higher than the background levels, it will be easier for the enemies to detect there. us. Yeah, it is. Let's take a look at the bad guys, Bone. As part of the emissions and radar tech, we also have the ability to scan while we're on foot. Oh, if we tap wow. the button, we do a quick scan to reveal everything, to reveal info about anything that's in our, in our view currently. Okay, Bone, let's do a quick scan. That wasn't oh, wow. that bad. This highlights whatever's in our line of sight. not bad. It's no worse than Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk makes them bright fucking red, remember? There's also some risk and reward to the scanning system. By holding the button, we can charge our scanner, and this reveals... This reveals enemies through walls using a more powerful wave. But it does cause a spike in our emissions, which makes us easier to detect. OK, let's do a charge scan, please, Bone. OK. We can also see the augmented reality box outs, which give us a summary of what we've detected. OK, let's have a look at our weapons. I like that. Weapons. Mm -hmm. Let's get the gun out, gun out please, I Bone. I like weapons. Right. Okay, we wanted to help the player see their equipment during combat, so we upgraded the weapons display. Oh, wow. As well as the ammo in the gun and the spare nice. mags in their pockets, we also now show the player's explosives and med pens. Nice, I'll make nice. it big. Okay, let's fight the bad guys. That didn't really help it looks any. Like <laughs> looks like the actual HUD is a little off the line with it. There you can see our new explosives marker, designed to help you spot deadly grenades, mines and missiles more easily. Run, dipshit, run! I got you covered! Shoot him in the kneecaps. Look at those new scope of you do it? right there. Okay. Dude, reload, you Golden got bone. one bullet. <laughs> I don't think Bones plays a lot. No. He does. There he goes. Nice Ooh, headshot. Oh, it's also oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Vegan, if he dies, do we get the do we okay. get the make means for years? Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's no more hostiles nearby, so let's take a moment oh, to talk so about the Moby you guys glass. Here, he was using the, the Moby glass is the star system equivalent too. of your smartphone. Mm -hmm. The new what? 
but hook into the, the new movie glass. Here we go. Like all the UI we're showing you today, we wanted to redesign it with the player's usability in mind. To make it look good, and also when the, lay the groundwork for future expansion. Quick, guys. <laughs> uh, let's bring up the mobile glass, please, Bone. Oh, oh my god. No. Oh, that's, god. That's, 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 oh man. Oh. Look at that. What god, a breath of fresh so air. Cool. Oh my cool, huh? god. Star map, come so on. We designed yeah, the map. interface to give map. a smoothing come user on, experience. Show the star map. We've overhauled the visuals, as you can see, I'm sure to they make will. it feel more three-dimensional and holographic. Come on. This is actually a sneak peek of the UEE military mobile glass we've created for Squadron 42. Yeah. That's Another two. This version has a focus selection of apps, Damn. and yeah. we're going to expand on that when we bring the mobile glass to the Star Citizen Persistent Universe. We'll also have more of a smartphone feel in the PU with a wider range of apps. Freaking smartphones! God damn it! Can't okay, get away from even the future. Can't get away from your goddamn phone. There's an overview of our health, <laughs> yeah, know, right? the environment, You're right. and even our ship. He we can smartphone. also check our mission objective. Uh, I guess he actually does have a freaking Apple, huh? Okay, I got all that so shit. You guys owe me 20 bucks. That's enough about Damn the Moby Glass. <laughs> uh, we've got some more yeah, really cool UI just around the corner. The and to this tell you a bit more about them, this is a very talented Zane This is the Squadron 42 build for the PU. Damn. It certainly seems that way. Yeah. Why are they all on clap and I missed it? God damn it. Oh, I don't know. I didn't hear it. Good. It looks young. Hello, guy. human history, as we have ventured towards the allure of the unknown, we have out? used cartography as a key component to help shape our understanding and make sense of the world around us. Maps. Without these systems in place... Maps. Here we go. Yep, you say cartography. Catalog our experience. I'm just glad he's not a Tim Cook fanboy journey. this time. We are forever lost <laughs> amidst so our own environment, bumping. and we are just running around aimless. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This yeah. is why it is super important that you... As citizens of our ever growing, is ever persistent, ever evolving a, a persistent of, universe, um, are equipped with the tools Star cheeks. necessary to make. He may be the guy in Star Cheeks. <laughs> I mean, those ass so, cheeks were pretty toned. I mean, they didn't they didn't wiggle at all. They were they were they were pretty tight. Why do you think, Crumpet? Do you think this is Star Cheeks? So, Bone, our next objecti objective <laughs> is to. She may not even be here. She's like, God, you guys are creepy. I'm out. And download or terminal. So Zane is the guy that's responsible What do you say? Go to the kiosk and download the terminal. Map. Let's go Ooh, ahead and map activate. terminal. What you see on screen, zoom out right, Fegan. What you see on screen is a fully live 3D nice. representation. And a flashlight right in the middle of the fucking yeah, screen, dude. In. You can, uh, you can uh, Hit T. Like Hit T. Play. Hit T. <laughs> Doesn't, doesn't play very much. Call out. Doesn't <laughs> People in chat are telling him hit T. Interest. You can pan the map around, you can rotate it, and you can even cycle the floors that you're on. You can also uh, isolate uh, 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 download it too. Of the floor that you're on. Yeah. Yeah. So our current objective, it's much more interesting if we can actually take this on the go. So let's download, download it, it to our data bank. <laughs> Yes. Everybody's like T T T T T T T. As you'll notice, that's where the mini map came map from. Loose the representation of the environment in our yep, in the upper left, left corner of our visor. There it is. <laughs> About fucking time. Yeah. Now the oh, thing that's really interesting now. to note at this point hmm. is not all environments will have such a convenient kiosk available. You may encounter rundown settlements, or you might come across a cave that no one else has ever set foot on before. What will happen in this instance is your radar will incrementally update your map, and it will incrementally reveal uh, your environment and just save that to your databank. So you kind of so fog of war, basically. Incremental. Yeah, I was about to say fog of war. So you could just say fog of war and be done with it. This map, <laughs> yep. what we see in the upper left cor uh, corner of our visor, is not really just the map. What it really is is actually data. It's our radar, and we can see <laughs> so did, contacts did you guys, on our radar as uh, we notice that that um, um, it's basically that there was uh, a tarp. What we have available. Uh, in, the in blowing in the wind. Yeah, so, I did actually. 
A bet sheet yeah. animations confirmed. Because we have the, the location <laughs> tarp data animations saved confirmed. to our data bank. Oh, yeah. Star tarp. You can obviously access that <gasps> it's via our mobile glass. So let's Star turn tarp. Tarp. it up in our no, mobile glass. It's, uh, because it's this data is about really tarp citizen. <laughs> Starp citizen. <laughs> 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 nah, this is cheap citizen. Yeah. I love that. That looks fucking good. Yeah, it looks Hello. good though. It really I would does. I'd like you to cycle yes. between the different floors for us, please. Poor Bone. He's got to remember how to do all this shit in his so little demo they created. This lurping transition. <laughs> Tarp citizen. Floors. Yeah, I figured that was a good and one. Marker callouts of our objective and also where we are. I would like to talk a little bit about the tech behind this. What you're seeing is not a pre-baked asset. And I want to reiterate that because all of, our all of our environments can be very dynamic and they can change. They can take damage. Perhaps uh, economic shifts Okay, might so blow out a stairwell and tell me what happens to the map. And we can't export Goodbye, totally map. custom <laughs> assets. Um, so what is we've done is we collaborated with our showing? graphics team to enable us to render the environment in this way. Go in and what and it is, is... I'm sorry? See the green door, see the green door and see render. how in the center of and the map there was a black everything square? everything that we don't need to render. Right, so yeah. in our level markup, yeah. we basically I'm have the designers go door and, it's gonna and artists the mark up only the bits that are necessary for the map. Oh, yeah, okay. This okay. Lets us have and between Kovalex and Silo Passage? but yep. without okay. much of the cost. Yeah, it makes sense. So, I think... I'm guessing the orange point, is the... Tr is what the, I want to uh, show you... Is the objective is in green as very home. interesting. So, we might look around on this map and note down certain areas that... Is it showing an elevator going up and down on the far right side, or am I tripping balls here? The I think it's shuttles. Some doors shuttles, yeah. Oh. Those are the and shuttles, the transport shuttles. They, these doors okay, are, makes sense. Are, are entities that are called out on the map, and they may change state. So there can be some doors which have a locked state. The north of the map, bones. Which they will display red. And doors that are open will be green. And there are other entity callouts that can happen in our map. So let's go ahead and find a location to, to put down a pin, please, Bone. Pick a pick Bone. Could be anywhere. Chat is demanding star map. <laughs> Maybe yep. that one. Maybe that door looks interesting. Press T. So oh, Marcus. what we can do is nice. set a marker, mm. and we can customize we can customize the details of that marker. I wish they just stop showing the well, as, as audience clap. Marker, I don't give a fuck. There's metadata that is encoded into each of these markers on top of the customized name that we can specify. Yeah, yeah. how long so you been waiting on that one? We can yeah. mark I've been waiting as many for like markers as we want. I'm sorry, yeah. playing five years ago. I hope we can and do that. It's been four for me. Bottom to our data bank. Let's hope. Can Let's hope. We can share these markers. Sorry. That make it a lot easier mining a halo. Markers on a, yeah. on Ooh, found some good rocks. Let's so drop a marker. Come back to this, it. We can't it's really talk markers about too. markers without. That going, would be awesome. Without mentioning. That'd be great for Bindi. Running. Bindi can drop them, drop a marker, and sell the marker to you. Oh, the data running. Oh, let me turn this guy up. So you might yeah, specialize in exploration, yeah. whereas perhaps a miner might specialize in the equipment, and they may make investments in their equipment. So you, as an explorer, might be in the business of going around and exploring and finding locations that are very valuable to okay. other professions. And I literally the role just said of this. these markers are very uh -huh. important in uh, coming up with the data and... Um, I just realized. Yeah, so it's very important. We can cut, basically... When you name your markers, you can, you can make it as uh, uh, maybe obvious, or you can Nobody leave it a mystery. The so you'll have, <laughs> oh, line, uh, when you sell it on the market, <laughs> you, you could get rated for how accurate the data is. 
Okay. So the other thing is we have a mission objective as well, and it would be very nice to be able to route to that mission objective. How do we get there? That is another purpose of right the map. Right-click it. <laughs> basically navigating and, sh and letting us know the way towards that objective. So it's towards going to give us a pathfinder? So let's go ahead and plot a route to this objective. Isn't it yep. right-click in Baldur's Gate? Isn't it right-click? Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Look there at that. <laughs> Very nice. Yay, I won't get lost anymore. So, come on. We can see a line being drawn from where we are up the stairs to our destination and where we want to go. So you will no longer be lost amidst all of our super complex environments. And what's worth mentioning at this, at this point, and what's really cool, is this under the hood is actually utilizing another piece of tech, AI pathfinding. And so uh. what that allows us to do is leverage other existing tech to basically, uh, they, it does all the heavy lifting. We just make it look pretty. So because of that, there are certain cases where the path might be blocked. It might have a locked door, or there might be a fire uh, that is in our way. The AI pathfinding will account for that. It will go through doors. It will handle elevators. And it will handle fires, locked doors. And it will just handle everything. So that is an example of sort of a piece of tech that we've leveraged under the hood hmm. to help us achieve this Yeah, goal. this guy's really nervous. Yeah. Poor guy. So. But he's, a, he's a doing all right. Oh, oh, he's doing great. Not bad. Probably could One last thing we can do or two, one or two more at the moment the beat, is or we want to make sure. Or maybe a nice shot sure before he hopped on stage. There are no yeah. more hostiles in our way as we make our he way knows, to our objective. Uh, so what we can do is we can send out a ping. He knows too much. Bone, if you yeah. send out a ping, please. Ooh. Did he just ping? So is that what he did? The scanning will also be yep. represented in the map in the, same, in the same fashion as it is oh, through your NFPS. Yes. So we know that there's no more hostiles. Let's go ahead and make our way to our objective. To the objective. As you can see in the upper left corner, we now have the route line represented <laughs> our destination and the distance it takes to get there. Don't rag on Zane. As Dude can bench 450 map, pounds and his grandmother's in a... Updates, and, and, and his and grandmother in a from that path, terrace Kasi, whatever the fuck a terrace Kasi is. No idea. And it must be a European thing. Oh, wow. Why did you stop playing? <laughs> He went a different way and it updated. So there's our buddy. That's good. <laughs> He's flying in. So we'll make our way up to the Carrick here. To the right. Uh, we can fly down to the problem. No. Now. No. Also notice Special the demo they made, remember? Down, as well as our marker uh, objective called out. It's on the, the same board. shit they did with the Microtech demo back in 20. And as you'll notice, as we head up 2019, the stairs, wasn't it? The floor yeah. will be di will uh, dynamically change yay. as you head up the stairs. To if we can, if we can get the past this first, thing, <laughs> if we don't trip up. Bones does. So Bones trips. as we make our way into the Carrick, it's not yeah, just loose. It's environments point. or caves or cities. We can represent Ooh, the ship I like on our the lighting on that. Look at that. Yeah, it looks and good. Also, uh, and it's totally seamless as you transition between Oh, yeah, it did, two. didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. So let's go ahead and pull up our Moby Glass again. Come on, and get a Star wider Man. view of our ship. Oh. That may be coming after the, 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 the Carrick. Look at so that. So we are now on the technical nice. deck. <laughs> oh, that's but we can nice. also see the other floors. That's if sexy. You traverse the floors, Bone, just to demonstrate it. Here's our cartography deck. Down one. Maybe Cobra will finally be able to find And our habitation deck. Inside. So you will have noticed from a previous presentation that this 
was very similar looking, right? It's utilizing our tech. So not only will this benefit you as a player, but it also benefits us as developers because we generalize this system to, so that other developers can leverage our map to create compelling gameplay. So other teams can leverage our tech, and we leverage the tech from other teams, and it's a circle of life. And I think it's a that's circle just of tech. too cool for school. So we've been talking about environments, God damn it. cities, representing ships on our map. Come on. Maybe planet terrain. Come on. These are quite, I mean, our, our universe is quite big, right? Quit playing around, man. It's only man. a small fraction of what our universe is. He's edging is. you, ferrets. He's edging you. He is, and I don't like him this what time. What if? What Ooh. if? Bella. What happens? Have we have we tried this? Have we? What happens if we just dude? Just come on now, don't buy it. And just zoom out a little bit. Oh. Keep going. Zo keep zooming out all the way out, all the way out. Oh. Let's go. Let's go. I think this is so, the map. Start it's not just the interior map. It's not just the radar. It is the map it is one single unified system wow. just across different scales. And I want, at this point, <laughs> we are above Crusader. And at this point, I want to invite Emily Hansen onto the stage to talk right, about vegan? the map as seen at this scale. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. now. You really want to make me have an orgasm in my pants? Tell me it'll mm. be in the next PTU Hello, release. Sister wow. Kong. Are you ready planets. for this? <laughs> 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 That's some big moves. Fine. She heard you, ferrets. She looked right know. at you, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I freaking wanted to. This is the star map. She does kind of have that Velma vibe. Now, that's a beautiful star map. Oh, nice. Shit. I'm so excited to be here today. To <laughs> right, Luz? As long as she's wearing that little skirt, we're fine. Now, I think we all know yeah, the current the star map needed a bit of work. Just... And we've done that. Now, mapping the universe is no easy task, but we've taken some big steps forward with this upgrade to make it so much easier for you to navigate the stars. Before we dive into the details, let's just take a second to admire Crusader's new look. Bone, why don't you take a look around? God, please hurry and get this suit. Much like the interior map, the star map is holographic. And this lets us add some cool interference effects and details to our planet textures. OK. You can also see our improved player marker and that we're currently at Orison. The player and location markers have merged at this scale the because they're so close together. Amobi B the player uh, marker takes priority, the new, uh, the new which is why the marker displays the player uh, icon uh, and color. It. The new uh, the, the Mobi by smartly merging the bigger points of interest at larger scales, map, the player marker always remains will visible to you. Be basically playing You'll Star System like are, a whole new game. Points of interest the map near would be, and far. yeah, definitely. So is I've struggled so much with the map lately; it's not fun. I've said for years I need to Bone, let's take the step back button. Yeah. That's the one on the right over here. It's getting worse, know. too. So we can see, look, take a look at Crusader uh, yeah, and all I, of its moves. I didn't know working on it, and I've been told it was like this, so I'm not shocked. It's pretty much everything I was told. But... Yeah, that so here we are. Game. Crusader, its moons, mm. orbits. You can also see that labels have received a major visual update. Yeah, you can actually read them. And this gives them a really cool perspective. <laughs> yeah. Most labels are aligned yeah. to the <laughs> Only 10 years, voodoo, voodoo doo 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 says. Only 10 years. Well, I noticed that there are plants clicking Bone? out of you. Can you tilt past the horizon, please? Mm -hmm. 
go out further bones when we do this, I don't the think he understood her. so you can always read them clearly oh, oh so it flips automatically nice that's cool labels for city markers and outposts work a little bit differently bone let's double click on sell in now to focus if they on offer it. the ability to filter specific kinds of markers you want mm -hmm. Nice. I'm not seeing a search option, so oh, that I am nice. okay. But look over in the bottom, in the bottom right area. There's what looks like a marker icon. Yeah. Want to show this in action? God, Star Citizen's markers on the far side of the so planet fade out, and up the so next they don't take focus on the locations you currently yes. care more about on the near side of the planet. Bone, can you double click on one of the points of interest? Just pick one, buddy. It's okay. As we selected this marker, yeah, its did. label will stay oh, visible at all angles. So far, we've showed you that you can use buttons and double clicking to jump to objects you're interested in. But wouldn't it be nice if you could also freely zoom out and into locations? Shall we try it, Bone? Let's zoom out until we can see Crusader. Oh, we wanted to ensure you have freedom to move around, but this flexibility requires us to be really Notice careful about how and when yeah. markers appear. Markers and, need to disappear scale, when they get too small, but also stay visible yeah. when they're still relevant to your view. This isn't simple because objects in a solar system are vastly different sizes. Think about the size of a star versus a planet versus you, the player. You're kind of small compared to a star, right? Our solution yeah, is a technique we call cosmetic uh, scaling. This allows us to draw a marker at its real size when we are close to it and artificially increase its size as we zoom out until we reach the point where it collapses into larger points of interest in the hierarchy. You can see this in action here. There's no way Crusader and its moons are this size <laughs> at this scale in reality. Vegan says, lady, you haven't seen my ego. <laughs> so you can see, see them. Bone, let's zoom out a bit I'm more. sure it's your ego you're talking about too, right, Vegan? <laughs> <laughs> you can also start to see Crusaders orbit line around the sun here. But before we go back, to the, before we move on to that, let's zoom back in so we can see everything come back as we get closer. Orbits confirm. And <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Ego is what he calls it. As well as zoom, you can also pan around the map unrestricted. Bone, feel free to have a quick look around. As we draw closer to a marker, the cursor automatically magnetizes to it. This ensures you never lose track of what you're trying to view when you zoom in. No more zooming in on empty space. <laughs> Yeah, but when? Bone, when we get to that's the same thing I've been saying either. all fucking day, man. When? I would not be surprised. The latest you. this year, supposedly. Uh, it, well, yeah, 12 it months. Magnetic cursor does not require us to would, click on markers. Yeah, I would say keep this is probably in? the this next all, six months. I, I think this Bone, is all can keep by zooming in. 42. You're going to see it when it drops. Thank you. I think you, you can see that the surface right markers appear well. without us needing to select Titan, the hey itself. buddy, how's it going? Imagine Thanks for coming how in. much easier finding that outpost will be now. Vegan, we could wish, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I'd be tickled I pink I'm, if it was. Crusader, as I you all know, isn't all there is, though. We've got a pretty big uh, universe yeah. out here. Vegan's like, please be 2022 or 3.22. Let's have a look at a location Let's further appeal. Can we just pan to quick, quick, Calliope, quick. maybe? Bone? Yeah, Let's give I mean, that a try. It's like, but but, if, it, but if it's dependent on underlying services that aren't part of the current environment, the UI won't work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I think understand. we're getting lost. I understand. They've Pretty sure we can all disagree this might not be the best strategy. So what can we do? Bone? Let's try clicking on the middle button over here. 
This returns us to our previously selected marker. As I mentioned, we did not select Yela, so we've gone back to Selen. So now we know where we are. That's a step in the right direction. But we're still not at Calliope. So we need to find a different way. Phone, could you take a step? Could you use the step back button right, Crumpet? so we can see the whole solar system, please? There it is. There it is. Mm. So I noticed that this map doesn't have the jump gates on it. Or the Lagrange the stations. Calliope is one yeah. of Microtex moons. It's just so bodies. If we double click on that bone, yeah, we should be able to see it. Maybe. Okay, Titan. And there it is. Bone, let's pan to it and then zoom in so we can see that magnetic cursor in action again. This pyro, the jump gates, is any of that part of Squadron 42? I thought Squadron 42 occurred in the past. Can you zoom in, Bone? I don't know. Mm. Thank you. I thought it was part yeah. of ancient history as part of a war and the predates. It's so this. cool to see more yeah. of our yeah. moons and planets and how different so, they are. So, it, may, it may not have discovered jump Okay, gates so this is great. But what if I hadn't already known where Calliope was? Surely there's a faster way. Yeah, We've got you. Oh, We've function. provided a drop down to list hope. the points of interest in the solar system. Oh, that's nice. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> We're actively working on ways to improve the way this list is presented to you to make it even easier to find what you're looking for. And yes, this will include search functionality. Yes. Finally. Will. But for now, Bone. We love you, Velma. To to Ariel. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> totally, I totally need love you, Velma. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love zooming around on this map. Phone, want to find area 18 for me? Nice. So, area 18 is currently on the dark side of the planet, it seems. Of course, it's not just planets and moons. Phone, how about we take a look at security post Korea? Stations too, huh? It's quite a long way down. Yes, got the Mikkel stations and all that. This upcoming search will really come in useful. Bone, want to zoom in a little and show off our holographic model of the station? That's cool. well, hopefully, hopefully, when you call for landing, it'll actually show you where to go. Oh, yeah, let's hope. Nice. Can you also um, yeah, that'd be good. Drop, the, drop down again, please. Thank you. As you may have noticed, the recent list in the drop-down populates as you click on locations in the list. It will remember your three most recent selections, so you can use this to quickly return to places in case you want to check something else again. Bone, let's use this to go back to Ariel. Oh, that's so smooth. OK. So we've done a lot of exploring. I think it's time okay. that we head back. We could do this by selecting Orison from the list, but we also have our own marker that we can take advantage of here. The eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that the player marker clamps to the edge of the map, keeping it visible to you no matter how far away you go. To get back to our position, we could double-click that marker, or we could click the yeah. first of the navigation buttons. Yeah, they're struggling right for this there. one, loose. Now, I'm sure many Lovely, of you the subject have been wondering keeping me fixed. if we can go back to our Karak map from the star map, just like how we got here from the Karak map just a few minutes ago. So let's see what happens when we focus on our player marker. Go ahead, Ben. What do you do, double click his player marker? Yeah. Okay. You can double click the player marker or the uh, uh, on the right hand side, the first of those three buttons there. Either one will take you to your marker. Copy. All right. So, yeah, here's Icaric again. Being able to simply zoom between these map contexts 
lets you draw meaningful connections between what's on the ground and what's in the skies like never before. Uh, we could manually map our own course. Bone, just three, for fun, let's zoom all the way back out. Though we know so waypoints are coming. We saw a leak system. where they had waypoints. I was going to say, it's just one thing that I'm looking there. for if you hadn't said It's it. just so cool to watch the verse open Audible, up before our marker. eyes. Mm -hmm. On the um, right hand side, you see it says Marker Database. Yeah. Marker database. So that's like custom With all these new possibilities for moving around the star map, you should never find yourself lost again. The controls are so much smoother and easier to use than the star map you're all used to, as I hope Bone agrees. Knowing what we've shown here today is just the beginning for the upgraded star map. You saw pinning in the local map, and we'll add this to the star map before you get here. Just imagine being able to mark something interesting you find out there in the verse, and then sharing that location with friends, just like Zane said. Exploration is about to get a lot more interesting, and we're doing everything we can to ensure the star map is your brightest window to the stars yet. She didn't say shit about custom markers. You can make markers and share them, but it hasn't said a thing about being able to quantify And now, let's welcome our intrepid demo driver, Bone, back to the stage. No, Velma, come back. Damn it. Thanks, Emily. Velma, we miss you already. Right. Thanks a lot. It's Tim Cook. He's back. So, we're really, <laughs> really excited about getting all these... Did you look in memes and pics? your hands. Um, of the this guy's a fucking twin, man. In Squadron 42. <laughs> Here. We know they're going to make a huge Tim Cook difference and this dude. Where you make your way around the universe. <laughs> so let's just quickly review what we've seen. Looks like a younger version of him. Yeah, it does. We've rebuilt the visor. Back when he had darker hair. Give you a better understanding of the environment around you. With the new mini map, with the integrated radar and ping, yeah. and it'll help you find that's, a way around. You know, that's the price of working for the devil, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am Satan. I will take your hair pigment. With its sleek but you've got a cool iPhone. <laughs> we're improving all the existing apps and we're going to develop some new ones too along the way. So we've got a video now. Have we got a video? And then there's our oh, interior nice. map technology, Teleported. which will truly help you understand your surroundings. Better awareness of your surroundings and threats. Exploring new map and mapping new areas. Like a cave or something. Pinning locations mm. for later and it's sharing these with your or something. friends. Again, exploring strange new worlds. Seeking out new forms of life. <laughs> these are the voyages of the USS Popcorn. Absolutely. Yeah. Or the interest. <laughs> Triples are not allowed. Ooh. Now that's sexy. Mm -hmm. And they're showing off the interior of the Idris. Yep, mm -hmm. there's your Idris. There you go, Ferris. I hope, I hope you're recording this. I don't have to. I can come back to it later. And uh, no, that's true. Up. That's true. More of yeah, put on some slow know. saxophone music. Pants right now. Yeah, <laughs> pants. Who's wearing pants? <laughs> Let me just go find that uh, really slow jazz love song. Oh, I already played. Let's get it on for you. Our you entirely new integrated star map. I really didn't hear it, but can you play it again? With its new interface. It won't play through Discord. And, let's face Damn. it, a much needed I turned refresh all that off. to the user experience. <coughs> uh, no more getting lost. So yeah, I didn't want already, to interfere. A whole new perspective. So we've already had three things from Squadron 42. With all these upcoming features. Mm -hmm. At least three that we know of. Explore today. They say three things bring us good Thank luck. Thank you very much. Cheers. That's true, Luce. All, all, all that it has to do is be reliable and repeatable. And you already got to win. The bar is set I, very I low. I'm still a little concerned that they did not mention markers you can quantum do. Or uh, waypoints. Yeah, and we saw a leak with waypoints. I'm trying to figure out how to reprogram my Alexa to respond to Bone. <laughs> Bone, add Cheerios to the grocery list. Bone, rescue the hostages. <laughs> I love you, Jerry. Haddock, we don't have that in the narrative. I'm going to find you. <laughs> Guys, that's it for day one of Citizen Gone. What'd you think? Oh, man. No dates. Okay, no He's dates. trolling. Relax. He's yeah. trolling. Oh, thank God.
If it was really was the end, he wouldn't have walked on stage. He would have already been there ready to go. No, I don't think so, Crumpet. I think he's trolling us. We saw Star Engine and all the amazing improvements that are coming to Star Citizen and Squadron 42. That's not it. We got more. Of course. We saw the next step in the evolution of resource management and the birth of multi- It would have been a better ending. He would have been ready to go if it really was the end. He walked on stage. This is improvised. We saw the ship guys. <laughs> the, ship the ship guys. guys. And of course... That's how we're going to know it. The ship guys. Come on. The star map. The interior map. Everything. Hey, favorite. Well, people are walking out. They're going to be disappointed. I often joke. I often joke that... We're just like you in many of the same ways. We want the same things. We need the same things. We have all collectively, all 13. Oh, he's really good at this, Vegan. For Cloud Imperium Games, been like, he's a natural at this. When to see it? So good. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this wraps up day one. I'm going to tell you that Hall B is going to be open for about another two hours. Well, I guess the AE is a troll. Wow. Wow, it stuff. seemed like he was trolling us. Tomorrow, back tomorrow, be sure you come back. We got character advancement. That's Ian Leyland, Sean Tracy, uh, Forrest Stefan, I guess and I was uh, wrong. Andre Perez. Uh, yeah, me too. I really want to tell you what you're going to see, but you're not going to want to miss it. If you thought the opening to day one was hot, check out the opening to day two. We got life in the first place. They haven't we sold a $500 ship yet. How all of these things I know, right? That's kind of weird. Last, last year, they sold three ships, remember? Yogi, who doesn't love Yogi? Hell yeah, Yogi so rocks. Even if that bastard is taking away my cruise control button, he can suck for that. An atmospheric flight huh. experience uh, that's been developed with master modes and through Squadron 42. Uh, we got Living on the Edge and Destination Adventure. A two-part yeah. look at Agreed, all the Liz. new locations that are coming. The Pyro system, the Stanton system, and... Uh... Beyond. Beyond. Just say the word beyond. You're good. You know, That way you don't get fired. Nope. <laughs> I got. I've been here nine years. I got to make it to ten. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everybody, from the bottom of my heart, and standing here in front of the thirteen hundred people who make this game possible. Wow. Thank you for joining us for Citizen Con. Come back tomorrow, eleven a.m. Pacific. We'll see you then. Day one was great. You ain't seen nothing yet. I was wrong, Crumpet. That's it. Show's over. That's all, folks. So, yeah, that's right. Same time as uh, tomorrow, twelve. I th thought it was uh, a different 11. time zone. He said eleven, didn't he? Well, he said eleven uh, Pacific. Oh yeah, yeah. So at uh, twelve Central. That's probably same. They're probably gonna do the same. With the eleven Pacific would be uh, one Central. Yeah. So they're probably gonna start. The uh, countdown at 12, pre-show 12.30 would be my guess. So, I gotta say, my favorite part of me turned on this music. I'm going insane listening to the same fucking track over and over. I mean, it's a good track, don't get me wrong, but like after the sixth time, I'm done. Uh, He did seem a little nervous, right? I don't know, maybe. I mean, he definitely didn't seem like he was ready to go. And normally, he is right on top of it and ready to go with the next bit. Um, my favorite part of it was the map of everything that they mentioned, all the pretty stuff, the cool water, the deformable terrain. The map is the part that I'm most excited for. Oh, yeah. I just yeah. don't want to wait 12 months for it. Yeah, I saw, I, saw a lot, I saw a lot that makes me want to buy Squadron 42, but I didn't see anything that made me want to spend money today. I, I, I gotta say, yeah, yeah I, that's true. I agree. I really don't want to wait 12 months for that map either. But mm -hmm. just to know that we'll have it within 12 months yeah, makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. So, to be the bearer of bad news, they did say that the search on the map is coming and they're it's going not to in yet. program it in. So, mm -hmm. it looks like the map is not completed yet. Yeah. If they're still going to add things like the search function and stuff, it's probably going to be six to 12 months before we, before we get it, at least. Yeah, I'll probably the case. Search function? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Just well, have search. But, you know, all I can say is, is that it's great. I mean, a lot of people were watching the show, very few people were playing, but I can tell mm -hmm. you today, the servers, the game has been a 
steaming pile of crap. Nothing's working. Elevators. I got stuck on an elevator. I had to quit. It was like I couldn't get off Orison. I had to reset my account to force so I could pick a new system. What? I, I, it was bad. Mm -hmm. I have been bouncing well, around servers all live or PTU. Live. I've had. God I've damn. Had, I've had client crashes. Uh -huh. I can tell you I, why. Yeah. Everybody's there working on the show. Nobody's there working on the servers. <laughs> servers don't need to be. There's not humans managing servers. Okay. If that's Dude, the these case, ser then these servers get trashed so. These servers are getting trashed so much right now. They have to be reset every now and again. Just no, no. You have to understand. Ser cloud server farms are all based on automated processes. It is not human managed. Hey, Scard. Trust me. Uh, you missed some conversation about a map. They showed the new version of the yeah, star map. Cool. That was the part that I am most interested in, or oh, most, oh. or most, mostly excited for. Go ahead. All I know is, is when you play, you can sit there and watch it. It, it starts out really good. You can watch server degradation go down and down and down oh, and yeah. down. Agreed. And then Memory leaks, you can tell. All kinds of problems. Yeah. And then you can tell, oh, shit got reset because all of a sudden, boom, you Those get into a new server processes. and it's working great. Trust me, they're automated processes. Just take my you word know? for it. That's what I do for a living. Yeah. I'm just saying that today has been terrible. I've been playing for two weeks with very little problems, mm -hmm. but today has been awful. <laughs> just awful. The biggest thing today, besides the map, because Pagan's already said that, for me, yeah. was the separation of the replication layer. Yes. That, yeah. to me, was huge. Because and, like, and that's the start of server meshing. To me, that that's bigger than the, the map. Mm -hmm. the, map is, the map is big in a that's different a way. The map is, yes. sure. Yeah, the map is good for us. Server mm -hmm. meshing is good for the game. Yeah. yeah. Without without good without the server meshing, the map's just window dressing on a dog turd. Yeah. 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 Desa said yeah. they need to be hands on with the automated server process. Yeah. Yeah. It's not it's not a hundred percent on autopilot. That then then they're doing something very wrong and I wouldn't want to I do it, I totally agree with you. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you. It it it, it you know, like I said, I, I'm a cloud architect. I've worked with all the major platforms. I've worked on systems much bigger than Star Citizen, with much more important, you know, real world consequences for logistics, finances. Mm -hmm. We do automated tracking. We do automated restoration, I, I, automated scaling. I, and if, if I understand I the automated, to, yeah, I understand the automated they, thing. The only problem, then, then answer me this: How come this happens just about every weekend and on a long holiday? Because they're not it, likely the, the applications are well one they don't have meshing in place so you're not you're not shifting around two they uh they clearly have memory and resource problems and under load when you bring mm -hmm. load onto a system it, it, it will manifest like this if i'm seeing a system go dog shit Agreed. it's usually oh, under oh. load and and until they get all load, of, they're not going to handle it okay. and all i'm saying is, is every time you have a time period where you don't have the developers keep an eye on the servers. Let it be a weekend. Let it be a holiday. Let it be Citizen Con. Every time the developers take time off, the servers go to shit. Well, first yeah. off, the developers aren't managing the, the servers. Well, support. I understand his point. What he's what you're saying is it shouldn't be, and I get that. But what he's saying is that it is, and I agree with him. And other people in my text chat are agreeing as well. Uh -oh. So I, I understand that. you're saying that it shouldn't be, and I totally agree. Well, but it is. Should have got a water, buddy. We're also we're also dealing with max population, and I think the server, the server slots are maxed out, so it can't just fail over as quickly mm -hmm. and easily as it used to, uh, when we've got yeah, max probably. populations. Yeah, yeah. It's not that we're arguing with you about how it should be. We're just saying that's the goal, but it ain't there right now. Yeah. Man, it don't work the way it should. For so long. Four fucking years of this. Yeah, this, this, and longer this, for you guys. I mean, you guys have been here for a long time. You guys have a lot of patience. So I'll, give, I'll give you that. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, like, and it's starting been, to run out for me. Dealing with this for like for me, it's been eight years that I've been actually playing, and yeah, it's yeah. it's rough, dude. It's rough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Raven, Raven's a gray beard. Halo's a gray beard. Majestic and I started about the same time. Uh, I think Gamers is a gray beard. Um. There's a couple others that pop in here from time to time that are gray beards as well. Crumpet's been backing for a hell of a long time. 
Vegan's been backing for a long time. Scar's been here for about two years. It's just that, like, I that, that's my frustration is that I also deal with cloud architecture and I'm just like, this isn't how it should have been set up even in a, in a mm -hmm. test environment. Yep. Yep. Welcome to the dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. Grab a seat, get comfy. But yeah, I, there but yeah as, as it says right now, anytime, anytime the Ow. company isn't manually manning the servers, well, let me, it's going to go to shit. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so I've worked for some very large SaaS providers. Very okay. Large SaaS yeah. Providers. Hold on. During trade shows, that it is all hands on deck. Everybody's watching. This is all about brand reputation, brand awareness, brand, you know, you don't want your environment to go sideways during the show. I can guarantee you, know. you they put 100% of their resources on the Citizen Con show. We know they did because they even stopped with the whole updates, dude. They had gamers, yep. they had devs playing a fucking game, dude. Yeah. Everything was on that sitcom show. Everything else. Yeah, 2014 for you. Yeah. I will guarantee yeah. it. Yeah, I knew I knew you were a graybeard. Like, fuck, we we uh we crashed the fucking store. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And it happens every year too. Every year, ship comes out and boom, the servers. Hell, wasn't it last year where they like, I'm sorry, guys, the search, we're having some trouble with the store page. Give us just a minute and we'll get it back up. I know. I'm just saying this. Is the, what's the confidence that they're going to pull it together? Why, why, oh, yeah. Why, fair why, point, Scarred. I'll, I'll, I'll hear you. I, I've heard you guys complaining today about this is it getting delivered, this is it getting delivered, this is it getting delivered. But if they can't make, keep their store page up during an event, the most static of content that's easily scaled across a distributed web farm or horizontal scaling. They can't keep that up. What gives you the reason to believe they can keep something as lofty as what they've been painting a picture of? Because uh, I've seen the difference over the past seven, eight years, whatever it is, is I've been playing. I totally agree with that, you, Scar. His, his network background doesn't mean shit it, because he's not running it. Sig is running plus, it. I've, I, I've seen I've seen big, huge mega corporations the get their websites to... crashed on a big, major launch for their True. Hours. True. I, I have seen game, game companies. Uh, for example, Destiny. Destiny released the, uh, was it the Taken King? I think it was. Expansion on, on uh, for Destiny, their um, Blizzard Entertainment. Um, and it was down all night. Uh, this is this was an event oh, that, was vegan? that was literally a race to where people were racing to get the max level so that or to a decent level so they could do the raid so that they could like race the raid and become the first in the world to do the raid and the servers were down for the most part of the like two or three days um like this is blizzard entertainment that's yeah. fucking doing it not just yeah. Not just yeah, like some backyard bobs like D uh, Diablo, Diablo Four when that first came out. Did this? Oh Jesus! Oh God! Hell, the Diablo Two remaster servers were crashing. Yeah. Um, and also you got Activision with Call of Duty, and you got EA with Battlefield. How many times have these games crashed the servers just because well, of the fact that all, all I'm gonna say is, you guys, are, well, you guys run the spectrum. It's kind of like a domestic. Uh, uh, situation you guys will rail on it during the day throw all kinds of wet rags on it you know enthusiasm and then if someone goes oh but what's your confidence in this why do you have this confidence you get real defensive of the of, of cid i didn't attack CID. I said, what gives you guys the confidence why do you keep coming back why do you keep spending the money when during a major event whenever all hands are on deck all i was doing is making the case of today was not a good look for them technologically. No, sure, it's the not. Show looked. So yeah. what? What? Why the confidence? I'm just looking for inspiration. Because, like I said earlier today, a lot of you were also really down on. We're not. And we've seen this before. We've seen this. Yeah, I was one of them. To be truthful, I was yeah. one of them. Show me something new. Uh, well, where's I, the new shit? Sandworm version 4.0. <laughs> I just want to say no, no white rags or wet rags here. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, look. The fact is, man, every time there's a major game release that, that or, or something happens, 
doors, game servers, whatever it is, crashes. It's not new. It happens regularly. It happens way more than people like to think it does. I, I'm well, and, and I want to make it clear here. They said the game servers, or they said the store servers went down. Well, I only had one time that it gave me the error. I clicked reload, and I was yeah. right in. Yeah. I got a black screen for, I think, about 60 seconds. I mean... Yeah, my, yeah which isn't bad. I've, I've seen big companies go down for hours, and here they just went down for just a couple of seconds. Uh, What did you guys do to that poor girl? Which one? Oh. Last night. I mean, she is not recovering. She's gonna need some therapy. What the it's fuck did you do to her? She wants some more. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. That pose definitely says give me some more. She's covering her fucking head. Uh, but yes, what gives us the confidence to stay with? You have it? a little compass way. Yeah, me too. Scott. Because what we already have is awesome. And, That's true. And even though we bitch and bitch and bitch about oh this isn't here, this isn't here, we do still keep getting bits here and there. But, but all of them, we, do we come. always just—they're just slow. All of them, well, all of them, we always want more, right? The yeah. the other problem is that that we get the the th the main thing that I'm griping about is that the devs are playing with technology, and because it's Squadron Forty Two centric, like we can't see it, so they're not yeah. releasing it into the PTU or anything. Correct. So we're see, still struggling on this really early implementation that was abandoned a long time ago. If, if it wasn't having to wait for Squadron 42, we would have had a lot of this shit already. And yep. I'm seeing Squadron 42 playable, doing stuff that, that we're going to be doing, like repairing and, and whatnot on the fly yeah. as we go. Yeah, and like, that's that's what I'm looking for. I was looking for the technology progress, and that's what I wanted I to see. Help. Not not everything that they've hashed out in for the last four years. I don't want yeah. to see that. I want to see the new yeah. shit. So I can tell you the yeah. no, Scar did not. Is substantially different from the forty the Squadron Forty Two. Oh, thanks for the sub, oh. Pat Dizzle. Appreciate it. I remember when yeah, the Squadron Forty Two was just a demo of like the Gladius flying around and shooting some targets, and that was yeah. it. And look, now that we're at this, you know, point where they're, they're wrapping up Squadron 42, they can now start bringing the stuff over to the PU, and hopefully, you know, we'll be getting our star map and our upgrades, and we'll be getting, you know, the the physicalized water, the perfecting the thrusters, and the disruptible sets and stuff. You know, I don't think it's going to happen overnight, but, you know, soon, TM, in the next 12 to 18 months, maybe. That's what he said. Everything you see today will be coming in the next 12 months. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. That's what he said. I, I I didn't say I believed him. I said that's what he said. Yeah. yeah. If, so, if they could deliver half of that in the next twelve months, I'd be all right. Yeah. That's, Fair point. I, I I think I think a lot of the stuff is almost is pretty much ready to go in. Yeah. It's just we have to wait for the fucking Squadron Forty Two. That's what that's no. what I'm trying to say. Mm. So, oh, we think we're artificially slowed down because Forty Two is yeah. not out the door. Yeah, yeah, I think no. most. Okay, I understand a better lot of now. This shit's already, I think a lot of this shit's they ready do, to go. Every it's fucking time. ready to go. We would have had it already if it wasn't for the fact we're waiting on Squadron 42. Well, That's so why I think he can get get away with saying we'll have it within the next 12 months. Because most of it's done. So I can tell we're you what waiting. they've done. I can tell you what they've done, right? Is they've gone through and they've got the, the Squadron 42 PU build and they've worked it up to the point where it'll go through, it has the new Moby Glass, it has the new maps, it has all this new stuff. Once they get that all working and they're getting that all gelling together, then they're exporting those models and they're putting them into the PU. Um, so, no, it, it's not a case of us having to wait for Squadron 42 before we get the new map. The new map will be coming soon, as in before Squadron 42 drops. They were just using the Squadron 42 PU build as as a as a testing ground to make sure that it all works and, and everything like that. Scar says oh, yeah. Squadron Forty Two is gonna flop outside of the SC community. Could very well be right, Scar. I mean if it doesn't really impress people then it'll be another um Cyberpunk. Mm. But even Cyberpunk sold the, the volumes, difference is the it? Cyberpunk really didn't flop on the PC. It was the Xbox it because it should have never been released on the old gen consoles. I'm talking yeah. about perceptions though. Everyone perceived yeah. not everyone 
the general populace thought Squadron, uh, not Squadron 42, God damn it, Cyberpunk was a disappointment. I'm not saying that I thought it was a disappointment, I thought it was a pretty good game. Well, because even on PC, there were a lot of disappointments when it first came out. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And, and this is getting back to the point that someone was mentioning earlier. Star Citizen has to nail Squadron 42. There is there is a bunch of, of game journalists lining up to That's tear true, this Scar. game to shreds. I mean, Whether you... There's a lot of people lined up to praise its, to praise its worth, too. But unfortunately, they're not the game's journalists. Whether you... For whatever they're reason, what? Right, they're not the game's journalists. Not the mainstream game. Oh, the journalists. Okay. Yeah, like, like Kotaku and stuff, right? For whatever reason, you know, when we can debate this personally, I think it's because it's indie game sort of stuff. But regardless, for whatever reason, the game's journalists, the mainstream game journalists, the Kotakus, the INGs, the IGNs, all those sort of places, they're going to try and find something wrong to knock it down. I so don't. I don't. I don't read their shit anyway, so I don't give a fuck. Yeah. No. no. That's why I didn't know who they were. I'm like, I don't. I don't read it. Don't give a fuck. Yeah, a lot of people still do that. That's the problem. Okay. Well. I, I don't even know. I do my own research. And yeah, you're right, Scar. Waiting two years is not is not acceptable at this point. Uh, I hear the way. The way I hear it's going to play out similar to S. Star Wars X-Wing, Wing Commander, 20-year-old models. Well, he came on and he he basically fired shots at the ones that say that the engine will be outdated or would be obsolete. His 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 ammunition, I guess, was tech demos. And it was, to be honest, it, sorry, I was going to say, it, to be honest, even if Squadron 42 or Star Citizen doesn't progress any more than what we saw today. Say that's the end goal. Are we really going to be calling that outdated? There were some who will. Like Really? That's 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 outdated. Like Well, gaming gaming is gaming is an evolve or a moving I target guess. though, to be truthful yeah. with you. I mean what 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 I thought was hyper realistic back in hell even ten years ago doesn't hold shit to today. No, but you look I at mean, the games that came out like Starfield or, or the games well, that came okay, out. Okay, yeah. so that's a perfect example. Starfield, as far as Bethesda is concerned, and that the the story, the what? campaign, the complexity, the, the NPC interactions on the planet, even the visuals, they're all really good and open. You know from a modding perspective and the community and adoption is huge, but the, the, the gaming media tore it apart. And now it's ratings on steam are turning into dog shit. And it's like, and, and it's like, it's actually a really good game. I spent 450 hours in that game because the story was engaging and the side content was engaging. And I'm just like, Oh wow. I just came across this random thing. And it was, it landed in a four hour side. quest. Yeah. Yeah. Was like, yeah. Great scar. Yeah. It is a, it but is an outdated on. looking. Hmm? But hang on, you're you're talking about side quests and missions, right? We're talking about graphics and outdating graphics. I understand that, but there are also yeah. other games that do amazing graphics and have no side content. It's great to fly around for a while and see stuff, but if there's nothing to keep you coming back from a storytelling perspective, yeah, mm -hmm. he's got a point. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, we we totally agree at the end. Oh, uh, Space right? Engine. Otherwise, you got fucking Space Engine version 2. You go to Space Engine, you fly around, you look at shit. How long do you spend in it? The longest I've ever spent in Space Engine was 45 minutes, and 20 of that was trying to figure out how to move the fucker around. Yeah. But, but you know, like, you're talking about, like, being outdated and stuff like that. Side missions and all that stuff, they can always add that stuff. That stuff doesn't really, quote, get outdated. What yeah. gets updated is I would and... I would point at Elite Dangerous right now and say you might want to rethink Content that. Content gets stale quick. Yup. Their their ability to add stuff in isn't saving them anymore. No. No. The company's yeah, in a bad that... spot right now. Yeah. yeah. So going back hey guys. Right. Yeah. What's up? If they do a Squash of Forty Two reveal tomorrow, mm -hmm. do you think they will also? I'd celebrate it with a uh, ship launch. I honestly think they're going to sell at least one ship tomorrow. Oh, I would have that a bit. Because the only in-game ship... They only offered two today. Uh, well, and it was only one in-game cutter. 
Yeah. The other one yeah. is concept. So, right. Yeah. So if they're following tradition, that leaves one more ship. At least. And this is a year where they seem to be... Um, gamers and I were talking about this privately or privately earlier. Um, it seems... Well, it, it appears as though we're more conscious of their fundraising efforts. At least I, I seem more conscious of it. Um, I've seen more stuff available for sale this year than I than I can recall last year, and we're not even over yet. We haven't even come into prime selling season yet. I know, right? That's kind of creepy. November, yeah. I mean, what's well, going to happen in November? I mean, last year it was the galaxy, remember? Mm -hmm. So that someone has broken down the the funding for this year compared to last year. The difference Seems between the two the five years, it gets to be outdated. Oh fuck yeah, Scarred. Hell yeah. The difference between the two is about four million dollars, and that's about all. Um, there's not mm -hmm. a big difference between last year at this time and this year at this time. Keeping in mind also, you know, we have a lot of external factors when it comes to economics that are causing problems, inflation, cost of living, stuff like that. It's not a surprise that this year is a little bit lower when it comes to fundraising compared yeah. to, to last year. Yeah, you're right. You know, some of us. If they were on target, then the F8 wouldn't have been released because that was their four million bump. Thank you. And right before CitizenCon, like that, the timing of it just doesn't make sense unless they're needing to like milk a few hype trains. I totally agree with you, Luce. Well, all I can say is, two weeks in, I played every major game loop. I own almost every ship in the game, even the most expensive ships in the game that you could buy a game in two weeks. What's going to hold well, you for, for two years? I a lot of that has... A lot of the reason why you were able to get all those ships so quickly is because you, you got into a broken game loop. Sure. Well, but I played all the other game loops, and, and I was, you know... But what I mean, what I mean is, is, is that sal being able to go and get that damn much money off of one salvage mission that that's not the way it's supposed to be or or if it is then they will rebalance the prices for ships in game because they don't want oh, yeah. you buying the ship that you want yeah. i mean they've already stated that their target was a week to two weeks sometimes a month for a ship just for, just for a ship a ship yes oh a week and of play time well, what does that mean is that like yeah a, 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 a that's that's the numbers that they threw at us on an isc well, one but, time I guess, like, this question is, are, what do they view as a week? Is it uh, an hour a night? Is it they said like average gameplay. What's that mean? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, I do not remember numbers. Yeah, because, you know, some people, average gameplay is. Oh, yeah. The night. Oh, yeah, agreed. Well, I, I think that's what they're getting at is average across the spectrum. So, yeah, you yeah. got some people that play one hour a night. You got some people that play 50 hours have a night. Out. So, yeah. Take your average of everybody. Yeah. So I fig figure probably maybe five, six hours. Guess. Probably. I imagine that's probably about the amount of time that like your average, yeah. you know. So, so figure five, six hours. And husband, night. wife, mom, da yeah. mom, dad, whatever. Employee. Yeah. Five, six hours a night for two weeks. There you go. You should be able to get a ship. That's a ship. Well, I guess what it depends it? on what ship. <laughs> you know, now true. You go, get, you, you go buy a vulture. You know, it'll be you know, a couple of you know, an average week to get a eight ninety. So, because yeah. mining used to be more profitable than Thank it you. is, and they got so that Yep, they always made. push it on the stuff that they want you to test. So then, salvage is now making more money because it's the freshest game loop in, and then eventually it'll get rebalanced back down. Oh yeah. On it. And it wasn't even the salvage scraping; it was just taking the cargo off the ships. Yep. <laughs> so because it's the new, it's the brand new thing. It, it's yeah. a brand new thing. Yeah, the moving stuff on the grids. It's encouraging people to get the stuff off back. the grids and loaded into their ships. Yeah, so. yeah, they do it with every new loop. Yep. Yep. Well, also, testing. what are our mm -hmm. edge case of how we're going to interact with it, right? Because I think a lot of us, some of us throw extra cargo out there. How does the system <laughs> handle that? Yep. Mm -hmm. like when we abandon okay. a bunch of cargo. Oh, I, I, eat, a lot of, I, I eat a lot of, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know you weren't here for the Scorpion, but way back when mining first started, Quantanium rocks were fucking all over the place. You could make millions. Oh, time. yeah. Yep. But then you can't, now you can't find yeah. a Quantanium rock to save the, your I life. And when you do, 
and I couldn't break shit. All the rocks were too big. Well, you yes. gotta be properly outfitted, too. Yeah. That's well, the other now, thing. That's not that obvious in your gameplay if you're a new player coming in online. Oh, hell no, no, you're no. You're dependent on having to go find a YouTube video. Well, see, you shouldn't have to do that. That's why they started the, uh, the Sherpa system thing. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. You should never have to go to YouTube to find out how to do something in this game. Guys like me who make videos of how to set up your joysticks should be out of content. There should be something in the game that's like, oh, you want to set up your stick? What kind of stick do you have? Boom, in little things. Okay, what do I want to set? Boom, done. Boom, done. Yeah, okay. I'm assuming we'll get more stuff like that as it moves out of Alpha Stick. And yeah, they have nerfed the salvage cargo a little bit already, but you still have a good chance of finding one that'll get you a couple million just off the cargo. So, I mean, that, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's going to get nerfed even more. Found that was loaded down with maze. Jesus. I mean, like, fuck, even if it's, like, 50k a run. Who's talking? Or, or 100k. Oh, it's John. Uh, I'd like to apply it. No, 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 I, I, I was trying to adjust the, the levels. Oh, okay. It, you know, it's, like... <laughs> Rights card. That was funny. Can't make a tutorial when you're working on bed sheets dev formation. Yeah. Don't forget star cheeks. It's all about star cheeks. Star, star cheeks. Really, you gotta show, you have to get that short together. I need to make a short for that shit. It's not gonna happen tonight. Mrs. B's gonna be getting home here in about 30 minutes. I'm gonna dip out, but I need to make a short for that shit though. Star cheeks. Welcome a little bit of very white Yeah, something. With a slow with a slow dolly zoom right up in there on the ass cheeks. Bow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Coming. Twenty nine fifty four. Start. Stand alone. <laughs> Oh my god, well, we ain't writing at her. You know, I know, right, Scord? Hmm? What's the one, uh... Please visit us again. Yeah, the, the uh... Bye. Uh... Oh, from Ferris Bueller Day Off? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. so beautiful. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better! <laughs> so they put a trio oh, pack for the Zeus's yeah. up. You can get all three for $425. Mm-hmm. I have 121 in store credit that I've been like, <laughs> okay, we're going to use this this year, maybe. But like, if I really wanted that Zeus, I'd have to melt the F8. And I'm like, F8 Zeus? Well, that's a no-brainer. I see that, that, like I was saying earlier, I was thinking about moving up to a Caterpillar. Well, yeah. with the ships I got, if, if, if I use my, uh, if I use my raft and my little STV, I got about a 165 worth in credit there. Mm hmm. Your SRV or STV? STV. Okay, so, like, dude, don't get rid of the SRV. That thing's no, going to be a moneymaker. No, no, I'm not getting rid of my SRV. Hell like, no. No, man. That, that thing's going to change every game loop. STV. Yeah. Look, I. Um. <laughs> I'm really hyped that I got into the Bonnie Merchant Man at $300, okay? But the problem I'm having is that it's now super expensive. The, the scale of it's increased exponentially, but it's not the game loop I want. The bartering flea market loop? Bartering flea market, yeah. You show up, you have people come to you to, yeah, mm -hmm. to do stuff, like, or you're peddling, uh, like, MUDS, MUDS mobile trader kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's for me. It's kind of like a ship you load down and you're like, okay, I'm done playing the game for the day. I'm going to step away while it's docked at this place right here and just let people do what they're going to do. Come back right? and see what well, happened. It was, it was. Oh, like running a fleet carrier in SC. You just let it see what happens with your sails. Yep. Well, um, it, <laughs> I'm really into that. Loop exactly. And I own one. But the way I'm looking at it is like, it's, it's a blockade runner. The Banu Merchantman? It it was yep. advertised originally as a blockade runner. Yeah. Really? It no longer yep. is. That's a big change. That's a huge change. 
The fucking MSR is a blockade runner. Yeah. Now the MSR is a blockade runner. And let me tell you what kind of blockades it's going to be running. Everything they've advertised yeah, as a blockade runner is no longer a blockade runner. Holy shit. Wow. Mm-hmm. I want to know what these uh, supposed blockades they're supposed to be running through look like. Right? How big are these blockades? Are they star-shaped? They made of tissue paper? Because Jesus, size seven guns, but fixed guns on a giant, slow-moving platform. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Those size seven uh, guns were useless, because what are you going to point it at? Gateway to An address? adventure. Tim Flag. Here soon they will be pointed at a you got Polaris. No, Polaris is gonna be pointed at Idris going boom de boom de boom booms. Exactly. If <laughs> boom boom boom, baby. Turn down something big enough to shoot at, then it's already got you dead to rights because it's a combat vessel, you're a traitor. Alright, who do we need to raid out?